What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Engadget Podcast live stream. I'm senior editor Devendra Hardwar. On the right side of the screen is Ruby's editor, Sherlyn Lowe. Hello, Sherlyn. Good morning. And in between us, uh, sandwiched is Ben Elman, our podcast producer. Hey, Ben. Ben is now, uh, this week, if you've been following the show, Ben is has a different background. He's podcasting from uh, my old stomping grounds in the Pioneer Valley. So I hope you're enjoying that, Ben. And good yes. morning to everybody. Who's in the chat today? Yeah, I see we have Jiming Chong, as always, uh, Jaime Avalos, ES, Joseph Barney, uh, Jen Robles, and Mohammed Fajrusalam, who says, Masi for Hari Lagi Tanyata. Mm. And Hari Lagi is the only thing I got from that, mm -hmm. which is today. I have no idea what everything else meant. My Malay is very it bad. Is, you, it is honestly so impressive that you're so multilingual in the first place. So. Singapore, you? Singapore, you? My mom knows way more languages than I do, too. Mm. And she'll never make you, let you forget it. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, she doesn't realize that that's a gift of hers. <laughs> I have to remind her. Mm -hmm. uh, Gabriel's here. Hello, hello. Snuck Jr., I Oscar TV, the Nubus Dev. So not yeah. you, Dev, but the Nubus. Um, but that's like lower level me, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I used. We were all out. noobs. We're all noobs at some point. Level one Dev. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, hello, okay. everybody. Hello. We're going to be diving into. Sherlyn has a big Apple Watch review. We'll be talking about that. Uh, the MacBook event. Certainly, there are thoughts and theories around that. And one piece of news we didn't get to last week is the Twitch hack. So. We will be doing all that. Hello, Giuseppe. Thank you for listening to the filmcast. Film yeah, we will. We have Manda Farrow from the Virtual Economy podcast joining us. So she knows a lot more than I do about this stuff. So uh, I, so you guys are going to see some of the behind the scenes of this podcast. Uh -huh. um, so shout out to our team. I'm dropping a link into our notes uh, okay. about one of the things we talked about sure. uh, right here. So y'all can laugh at it. Peanut Air it. asks, is it illegal to watch this while doing the dishes? Um, no, podcasting <laughs> is actually the best thing to have on while doing the dishes. I, I do so, it every uh, night. Remember mm -hmm. that uh, user, I can poop twice a day, yay? Yeah. I assumed that they were always watching us from the toilet. So Probably. They're, you know, and uh, maybe they've moved on. Maybe they're more regular now, and now they don't have to celebrate it. It's just normal. So, uh, Daniel Barney says Sorry. that they're in Utah and it's been snowing in October. Wow! Don't okay. don't, don't tell me about that. What's up, Trillin? Oh, I was gonna say Daniel says hello from Bolivia. We I, I like seeing where people are from. So. It's always fun. Hello, yeah. thank you for joining us. Um, this is just the live stream portion. We will be recording the podcast proper when we do that. We can't really talk with you guys, but uh, you know, Ben will be keeping an eye out for comments. We'll break for some Q and A in between at least one of the sections. I think after our Apple and a bunch of the news, and then if we have time at the end, we'll do some Q and A then too. And we'll chat with all of you guys. But thank you all for joining us. Let me just I look at the rest of the muting. show. Mute, 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 mute. mute everything. I've got so many windows open and only one laptop monitor. I'm so See, excited uh, right now. You know, you're living the mobile work life, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's very constrained. All right. Are you guys good to go to kick off the show? I sure am. Okay. Let's go in three, two, one. What's up, Internet? And welcome back to the Engadget Podcast. I'm senior editor Devendra Hardwar. I'm review editor Sherlyn Lowe. This week, we are going to be diving into a bunch of Apple news. Uh, they finally announced the October event, the one where we uh -huh. expect new MacBooks. That's coming next week, so we'll dive into some of our predictions there. Sherlyn spent a lot of time with the Apple Watch Series 7, um, which I'm sure uh, you love sleeping with, as usual, right? Like oy, sleeping oy, with gadgets, oy. boy. Fun? No? Sure. Um, sure. Okay. <laughs> sleeping with gadgets. That's actually a new new podcast. Right new there. column, yeah. new column, new feature. Uh, we'll also be diving into the Twitch hack from last week um, with Manda Farrow from the Virtual Economy podcast. So that's all going to be a, a bunch of good things to dive into. Let me, ch -ch -ch -ch. Let me just make sure you this is all in order. Or, yeah. Yeah, 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 I'll do all that. Cool. <clears throat> Let me do that last bit again so we have a cleaner way. Okay. We'll also be. <clears throat> We'll also be diving into last week's Twitch hack and what that means for live streamers and, you know, that that whole ecosystem with Manda Farrow from the Virtual Economy podcast. 
As always, if you're enjoying the show, please be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes or your podcatcher of choice. Uh, certainly leave us a review on iTunes. That's the most helpful thing for finding new podcasts. And you can always drop us an email at podcast at engadget.com. So, Sherlyn, let's lead off with the thing I think a lot of people are excited about. Um, this week, Apple announced that they're going to have another event on Monday, October 18th. Um, mm -hmm. We are expecting new MacBooks. Uh, these have been rumored you know, throughout the year uh, with uh, potentially M1X chips. Uh, certainly a new 16-inch uh, MacBook Pro would be nice because that thing is getting kind of, uh, kind of old. Mm -hmm. um, but... I, I've been expecting for a while a 14-inch MacBook Pro to replace the 13-inch model, and I feel like this will be the chance for that. Because last year we got, basically they shoved the uh, M1 chip into the normal MacBook Pro case, into <laughs> the normal MacBook Air case. Like, nothing really changed design-wise. Right. So it does seem like now's a good point to jump in. Any thoughts on, like, where we're headed with MacBooks, Sherlyn? I mean, I think the whole big thing has been M1 for a while there with last year's model. So you're right. I think maybe some sort of, you know, visual refresh is coming. Uh, I'd be curious to see what a 16-inch MacBook Pro with M1 might look mm -hmm. like. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, how, yeah. how, and, and also new chips. Are we getting new chips, you think? I mean, it, it's going to have to be new chips, right? It's been a whole yeah. year, but... I don't, I think the conversation is kind of, uh, we don't know if it's going to be like an M2 chip or mm -hmm. if it's just going to be like a slightly enhanced version of what we saw last year. So that would be like the M1X. Mm -hmm. uh, we we don't know. But I'll say this, yeah. I really, really liked uh, the MacBook Pro 16 inch when I reviewed it a couple of years ago. That is like the perfect ultimate powerhouse mm -hmm. MacBook, uh, certainly for mm -hmm. people who want a bigger screen and a more modern design from Apple. It had uh, thinner borders around the screens, you know, had a lot of power and that screen is just beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to see, like, they don't really need to change much with that design, but I'd love to see them shrink down that design and bring that to a 14 inch model, which will be even more portable. Uh, you know, g give us some of those thin screen borders and more power. And yeah. um, I think some of the rumors are also saying they could be, uh, these could be mini LED displays, which would right. be extra bright, much brighter than a typical laptop. Uh, not quite OLED, but with a lot of the benefits of what makes OLED screens really good. Have you seen any of these mini LED things yet, Sherlyn, in phones or tablets or computers? Man, actually, no. Maybe like a, an odd monitor here or there. Yeah, we saw like, some at CES. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. But but not on um, a, a smaller device just yet. Uh, I and the thing you were saying about making like a 14 inch screen in a 13 inch body, honestly, mm -hmm. that has to be the way to go, right? Because, like, you rightly pointed out, I mean, every other PC brand, everyone's doing, doing it. it, yeah, everyone else is doing it. So, so it feels like <laughs> time for Apple to bring it over as well. We'll see. I mean, they're already mm -hmm. late. How much later are they going to be? Yeah, that's, that's Apple... usually the game with Apple. It it's kind of funny, like Apple leads the way in certain things, but certainly like takes its yeah. time with some others. So it's like when it comes to the, you know, removing screen borders and, uh, you know, getting that like infinity edge display that Dell yeah. has been perfecting with the XPS line, uh, Apple has taken its sweet time. Microsoft took its sweet time too. So it's just True. kind of funny to see like, yeah, where they go with this. Um, if, uh, if, if the way they can fit in bigger screens is basically by removing a lot of that border around the screen. So that's like mm -hmm. the magic there. Like it'll probably look and feel just like a MacBook Pro 13 inch, but just have a slightly bigger display. That'll be nice to mm -hmm. see. Uh, there have been rumors around new AirPods, AirPods 3 as well, which we're overdue them. Yeah. You know, we're overdue. Yeah. And we've been hearing like they could look more like the AirPods Pro, mm -hmm. which uh, please, sure. I love the AirPods Pro, uh, mainly because uh, they actually fit into my ears. You know, they have swappable uh, different uh, rubber tips uh, that you mm -hmm. could use. And uh, they, they're they just a little more convenient and more flexible mm -hmm. in terms of how you can plug them in. So bring over some of that stuff to the AirPods. They don't necessarily need to have noise canceling, but uh, right. who knows? Who knows what Apple can fit in there? But it would be nice to see some new AirPods as well. I don't. Do you have any uh, things you'd like to see in terms of like AirPods or where things go, Sherlyn? I I mean, I'm just having flashbacks to when I covered uh -huh. like what to expect at I, the iPhone event where I wrote yep. all about the rumors around the AirPods uh, coming and they're still not here. So I think just, just bring them already. I think we're definitely going to, we're probably going to see them. <laughs> I don't want to say definitely because like, I don't know anything. But mm -hmm. I feel like, come on, if, if come it's, on. it's time, it's time. 
It's certainly oh, time. We'll like, it does feel like they maybe they've been delayed a little. And also, yeah. even though we're all stuck at home, I do find, like, I still reach for my wireless earbuds if I'm, like, taking a call or trying to listen to podcasts or something while doing work and I don't want to disturb the rest of my house. So, right. you know, unlike a lot of other things, I think unlike the Apple Watch or fitness trackers or, you know, devices you use mostly on the go, uh, you can always use a new pair of wireless earbuds. So I, I'm sure Apple's going to keep I, going with those. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, my experience of that is very different from you because I don't mm-hmm. live with other people. So well, I don't you you about... live in a box, Sherlyn, right? Like you're yeah, you're in so a box by need... yourself. You're good. I don't need <laughs> earbuds uh, ever yeah. unless I'm like you know trying to do a podcast recording where I don't mm-hmm. need the sound coming out to feed back into the mic. But yeah, um, yeah. Whereas a watch, I actually still still wear to track like whatever activity I am getting up to. So <laughs> you're sitting over here, and now you're sitting over there, and yeah. now you're laying down. <laughs> Yeah. Some of us, some of us go outside. Some of us go work out. How you dare know? you? <laughs> you go outside. I don't know what else we can expect from this Apple event. I feel like the MacBooks are the big things. Um, maybe. maybe yeah, maybe a Mac Mini refresh. Mm-hmm. Like it's not that hard to refresh the Mac Mini. Just throw a new chip in there. So, uh, I guess we'll see. I feel like um, I feel like it's too early for a new iMac, or at least uh, rebranding the iMac. But right. I forget when I even colorful. did. I review that one last fall. I don't know. Time, Did time. you get the colorful, cute one? With, was it the one with the chin? Yeah, yeah, the one with the chin, and they were colorful. Oh, you were, you were um, one, I reviewed it. I don't know. Time doesn't mean anything anymore, but <laughs> maybe we'll see some chip updates across the line. But certainly, um, last year when they announced the M1 chip, it was um, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, and Mac mm-hmm. Mini. So certainly mm-hmm. those, I I would expect to see new hardware in. New chips, at least. Uh, yeah. I mean, usually with Apple's events, too, we, we take a look at the invite to see if we can make sense of it and see if there's any hints buried in there. Honestly, all there is on this uh, graphic this time around is the word unleashed and then like some sort of motion blur effect that looks like you're zooming into a thing. So that's definitely speed is something they're going to talk about. Unleashed from what? Like what has been holding anything back? We don't mm-hmm. know. I don't know. It's just... A, it's you know usually just marketing, and B, honestly, let's just wait for the event at this point. It's just next week. It truly let's is. Just, it's October eighteenth. A few days from now. So just chill. I mean, um, maybe they're uh, unleashing the power of the MacBook. I don't know. Could be. Our our video team suggests that it might be AR. We mm-hmm. who knows? Maybe we'll see Apple's AR. Teeth. This feels like a weird yes. random event to do that. Like if they were going to debut the AR glasses, it would be it either would be their own its own event or yeah. do it with the iPhone event, which is the one that everybody really pays attention to. Uh, right. But certainly it's a good thought. Like we yeah. we know Apple's working on something around AR and that's probably going to be their next big, big thing. Um, yeah. But you know what? Yes. Speaking of Apple, Trillin, like you've been in Apple <laughs> in the <laughs> Apple world for the past several weeks. And mm-hmm. you just reviewed the Apple Watch Series 7. Mm-hmm. This one has the bigger screen. It's a bit faster. Yep. It looks like yep. the sleekest Apple Watch yet. What do you think of it overall? I um, I like it. I think <laughs> with a lot of the devices that Apple launched this year, you're going to find that this feels iterative. It feels mm-hmm. like it's a small update from previous generations. But that's not a bad thing. And I, everywhere that had a review, I think, generally said the same thing. Mm-hmm. It's slightly improved. Don't get it if you have the Series 6, but if you know, you're know you on anything yeah. else, pretty much, yeah. it will feel like I have a good a, upgrade. I have a Series 4, and I'm like, I felt really good with that one for a while because that oh, was yeah. the first big design jump uh, yeah. since the Apple Watch launched, and that's when they went yes. with the bigger screen and a lot faster hardware. And now I'm like, I'm looking at this and thinking, hmm. This could be yeah. nice, but here's the thing: like, even though I'm, yeah, I go outside, I go for walks, you know. Right. Um, I chase after my toddler. I still have very little need for an Apple Watch these days. Yeah. So, yeah, that I just I feel like I'm gonna sit tight and see like where things go for next year. But certainly, this is something I want to gift to people in my life. It seems like a yeah. good entry point into you know jumping into the Apple Watch. Uh, I don't know why the Series Three is still being sold for. I know it's cheaper, I but. It's- horrible yeah yeah i don't think it's gonna be around for that much longer i i mm-hmm. think they they also have a picture of um the three devices side by side that they are still selling which is the series 3 the se and the <laughs> s the series 7 you can go on like apple's website to see this and like you just look at the series 3 and you're just like that thing looks janky i mean mm-hmm. their marketing picture looks good 
But that thing, if you like start using it, the screen's even still square, like very, very square, whereas mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, a little softer and rounded on um, the, the more recent watches. If you're on a Series 4, I, I mean, the screen size... I would size see a big difference, yeah. Yeah, the screen size isn't that much bigger. Like, it's 20% It's 20%, bigger. 20 yeah, yeah. Yeah, for you. Mm -hmm. um, but the you're going to see, like, faster charging speed, I think, bring a bit more, mm -hmm. like, of a difference to you. The performance, it might be a bit more responsive, for sure. Um, but but like I said, like you don't have to, right? Like nobody's upgrading their watches every year. Nobody mm -hmm. really needs to be upgrading their watches every few years. Absolutely. Like two years. Yeah. So it's cool. But but here's one thing, right? Like I think the overall feeling about this watch is that it's still probably almost definitively the best smartwatch around. I'm like thinking, is there a better watch? <laughs> yeah, no. Actually. I'm waiting for you to hear like, oh, but the Galaxy watch no, or the Galaxy no, Active. No. Yeah, yeah I, I, it's just, this is the most like well-designed smartwatch out there. It's full-fledged. Mm -hmm. It's a very good extension of your smartphone. In fact, the best at doing mm -hmm. that. Um, Siri is very responsive on the watch. Every Everything just, you know, it, works really it, well. It just works, which has been Apple's yeah. like you know uh defining yeah line and thing for a while now but they they are... apple is very good about building like integrations between its devices right so like sure the best extension from your smartphone is yeah. is from the people who made your smartphone which has been right. kind of the problem with android right like we've talked about this google and yeah. android has had sort of the windows problem where Sure, let everybody build these devices, but then nothing feels cohesive. I don't know. I've seen some really nice Android watches and things like that, but it's never felt like great to me. I don't know what your experience has been. Like you've seen both, Rulin. Yes, Samsung has mm -hmm. made improvements this year because it made One UI, I believe, three uh, work better at um, you know bringing things over from your phone to your watch. So things like your Do Not Disturb modes and stuff like that and your apps automatically showing up the way they sort of do on apple watch um that's available on samsung's one ui3 watches so if you have either i think a software update on a compatible device mm -hmm. which i think it's only the galaxy watch 4 series um you you'll find it is more seamless than before uh but still it's not it's not like <laughs> the best but 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 mm -hmm. here's where things over in Android or platform agnostic land stand out or, or are better than Apple sleep yeah. tracking. Sleep tracking is one thing that the Apple watch just doesn't do very well still. And if that's a priority for you, which like apparently no one cares about, <laughs> it looks like it used to uh, when I remember when the fitness gadgets were like getting really hot. Sleep tracking was a big thing. A lot of companies invested hundreds of millions yeah. of dollars into sleep and health tracking we keep bringing up jawbone but the jawbone app like had a lot of like sleep tech in there for managing Fit, stuff uh, yeah but had this for a very yeah. long time uh yeah. i'm not sure if Fitbit was the very first to, to introduce it but i mean they're not the only ones with they, they, they were they were neck and neck it was fitbit and jawbone but i do remember fitbit had better data but jawbone had like prettier visualizations of everything so mm -hmm. i do um, yeah but <laughs> Does it give you a nice, like, soothing wake-up alarm? That's kind of the one you thing have, I miss. Yeah. You have the option of a vibrating alarm. You have mm -hmm. the option of, like, I think a gentle, so-called gentle alarm. Mm -hmm. Not the implementation is slightly different. Where, like, for for the watch, if you have it on the charging stand, it, the screen will glow slightly when you're right, like, near right. wake-up time. That sort of thing. What I take more issue with is that for sleep tracking to work on the Apple Watch. You have to either have gone through like all of the setup things and like enable your set up your sleep mm -hmm. schedule, enable like a sleep focus mode. It's annoying. Automatically, yeah. yeah. Or you you enable it yourself when you're about to go to sleep. And if you go to sleep earlier than your <laughs> uh, sleep focus mode comes on, you have to manually turn it on mm -hmm. or your sleep just won't be tracked. So right. or, like I don't want to be too pity, like too like sad for me and too like woe is me. <laughs> But excuse me, I or we have said multiple times on this podcast mm -hmm. how much I hate sleep, like <laughs> sleep tracking wearables and testing uh -huh, them. Uh -huh. But I do it because it's my freaking job, and I will lose a night of sleep. Fine, I strapped the watch on. I was like, all right, all right, this is the latest I can delay <laughs> testing the sleep, the uh -huh. sleep tracking. Put it on. Went to bed. Everything looked fine. I, I was like double checking the settings because I had been burned before. I was like, okay, everything looks like it's on. Sleep <laughs> tracking is on. Sleep focus is on. Uh -huh. Went to bed. 
couldn't basically toss and turn the whole night. I was just like in and out of sleep. And I was like, never mind. At least the watch is getting this bad sleep. At least it's tracking how poorly I slept. Woke I feel up, like uh, nothing. DaVinci, let me finish my story. No data. Nothing was tracked at all. Nothing. Mm -hmm. I waited. I was like, are you going to sync? Are you going to transfer data? Nothing. I waited another 10 minutes, nothing. And then I saw in like the health app, mm -hmm. there's like, bar like a bar graph where like um on some days you'll get a full like nine hours on whatever um nine it, hours it that <laughs> right yeah. but that's because why my sleep schedule is set for nine mm -hmm. hours right, because i right. i have goals and ambitions that i never fulfill mm -hmm. and uh, apparently according to the uh, the health app i have been sleeping nine to eight nine to eight or something or ten to eight whatever it is and for for like a few nights and it just wasn't true. I had not been. So what happened was that it was based on when I used my iPhone, um, yeah. that it was logging that time. So it also overlaps and, uh, and, and takes into consideration your iPhone use information. Mm -hmm. So Apple needs to sort that out. Let's just say that the moral of the story is Apple really needs to sort this part out. It's not automatically sleep tracking if you still need to turn on things like sleep focus. I yeah. I really want to see that because Fitbit's they, been able to do this for so long. They should have enough sensors to be like, okay, they're right. they're sleeping now. You could tell the heart rate There's is a little movement. lower. Like there's something. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to see that. Like the stuff should just know what we're doing. Um, I will say, I think some of Apple's health tech is just really weird. Um, mm. I since I always forget to wear my Apple Watch, um, yeah. I like okay, I rely on just like my phone to track my steps and stuff. Mm -hmm. I have noticed like the activity app just no longer tracks my steps for no reason it's like sure if that if it's like active. it's just waiting well i don't know it's like anyway one of those aspects is not it used to track my steps it yeah. used to track movement now it doesn't but that stuff is in the health app and it's not right. communicating with the activity app and i'm very very confused about how all that works so it's it's a lot of it's probably a setting you mm -hmm. forgot to turn on davinja that's the thing it's like it, and it's not yeah. even your fault uh, you know what i mean it's 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 too many buried elements that you have to be aware of you have to really go through the user manual to be like oh to mm -hmm. track your activity through the activity app and have it sync to the health app you have to agree to everything partly probably because of a privacy mm -hmm. security thing i i i feel like there's a lot of things <laughs> that they're being very careful and concerned about that are tripping them up mm -hmm. um i will also say that like i i mean i had that issue where like it wasn't really like showing up on the health app so i don't know fam like it's probably always... it's probably something here here's the thing i'm still waiting for something to do what the jawbone app did which was <laughs> the really smart uh they they had like the smart alarm which tracked your sleep cycle so basically yeah. when you were coming out of REM sleep and like the, the opportune time for you to be to be woken up and actually feel refreshed and everything, it would just do this like really nice wrist tap. It would just be like, hey, hey, what's up? I Wake up. And you like give it like I 30 have... minutes to do that. Yeah. You would give it a 30 minute window because it's never an exact time. But that was always a really nice way to wake up. And that was a gadget I never felt bad about wearing while I slept. Mm -hmm. But Oh, a watch is certainly much bigger. You know, I yes, feel like yes. there's a lot of problems to fix here. So how do you feel about this Apple Watch compared to last gen Trillin? Um, you know, you have issues, but it still seems like the best smartwatch yeah. around. I mean, right? I like it. I I yeah, I feel like there's something that does what you said, by the way, that the job mm -hmm. went up does with detecting your REM cycle and waking you mm -hmm. up at the right time, but I can't remember offhand what it is. Uh overall, the Apple Watch Series 7 is an improvement over the Series 6 in some very small ways, but it is still an improvement, right? The bigger screen makes a huge difference. Let's not talk about that QWERTY keyboard because L O L. <laughs> or rather, if I typed it on the QWERTY keyboard, mom. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but it would be what? <laughs> It would be like what, loop, lol, -L -L k i l. I don't know. Yeah, like whatever. I'm looking at my keyboard here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but uh, but yeah, the bigger screen does does you know bring some benefits like very much easier navigation on mm -hmm. some things like entering your lock uh lock screen passcode or looking at your workouts. It's just bigger, nicer, and people with visual Good. uh impairments can get larger font sizes mm -hmm. with new like uh top limits too and then the other thing is the faster charging it is significantly well significantly faster than the watch se i mean i did them side by side i did side by side testing with the charging um and definitely like it's it's 
what Apple mm-hmm. said, right? The number of percentage, uh, the percent number that it said is correct uh, in terms good. of the increase in charging speed. It's yeah, still wa- not yeah. super fast. The watch was never say. something where I'd sit there and watch the like charging level because normally it's an overnight yeah, I know, charge thing. But I think if they want you to wear it overnight, then you need to be able to like put it on the charging stand while you take a shower. So it's like 30 in 30 minutes to an hour, you need yep. to be charged enough for me to take you throughout the day, you know? Yep. I, and, and this time mm-hmm. it will. I mean, like, it, it is about in th- 30 minutes, in under an hour, let's just mm-hmm. say, it got fully charged for sure. Um, in about 30 minutes, you're going to get, like, 50 to 60%, I think, and which is enough for a day, uh, mm-hmm. depending on how active you are with it. Um, yeah. That's that's already a big... So with these two improvements taken into consideration, uh, it's it got, like, one point higher than the Series 6 on our review, partly because... I, hey. we still want longer battery life we still want that sure. like there is longer battery life but it's not noticeably long like not that much longer coming from the series six mm-hmm. um but it's still a good watch for honestly like almost yeah. anyone looking to upgrade almost anyone. i mean and realistically like people also 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 want uh always on screens you know they want a bigger display um yeah. so to match those demands in addition to better battery life, it's it is like tougher and tougher with such a small device. But yeah, I'm I'm glad there's some improvement here. Um, Jonathan Anderson in the chat is asking, "Where is that 60 millimeter watch? Let's go, Big Apple." Oh, uh, no. You know, imagine imagine that honkster on your wrist. I feel like Samsung Ooh. Samsung is fully ready for that. Like Samsung has a <laughs> Galaxy Watch Note, oh, my God. Galaxy Watch Note with stylus support. That's Samsung. Um, <laughs> just stop giving them ideas. God. But looking at the Apple Watch now and like how big the screen is getting, it's just like taking over. It's the entire face of the thing now. Oh, it man. is not that hard for me to like look ahead and be like, okay, give me, give me just like a flexible OLED wrist strap or something, right? There Which Samsung has been working more towards an Apple, but I could see like how this could transform into sort of a sport bracelet or something that is not even that's beyond a watch you know so have you heard of the nubia nubia yeah. has made yeah. like a, yeah a curved screen uh almost mm-hmm. like a snap bracelet type of thing um and i mean don't forget the will i am pulse uh <laughs> how can i how basically can I <laughs> a prison cuff or like a handcuff uh yeah. with a jank oh man i was looking at my old pictures of that thing that thing was <laughs> wow sorry um, well i am uh love your music yeah. not not your guest sorry so. buddy we're best sorry, friends buddy. in case y'all don't know me and Will. yeah i remember um, <laughs> <laughs> um but but no I, I i think people have tried but who, do you really want to wear that like big flexible screen on your wrist when you're like it might be no. scorching for your eyes whenever you look at it it may be scorching i'm just trying to think of like what would i because i also don't like wearing watches that much you know yes, so what would be the well, thing that I actually would want to wear. And that's that's kind of where I go back because now I'm like, okay, yeah. do I, maybe I should just get like a nice classic watch because yeah. uh, I don't need more connected stuff. I don't need more notifications. Uh, yeah. It's kind of a weird place we're at. Um, so but yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe a hybrid, maybe like uh, one of those Timex or Fossil hybrids. Maybe. Or like, yeah. Or I've got, a, I've got enough tracking. Things. Okay. Yeah, I, I feel like I've got enough tracking. So I basically use my Apple Watch as like an activity tracker and I not see. like a da- daily wear thing. Right. Um, I will say this pro tip for new parents, uh, Apple Watches or any smartwatch is yep. a perfect way to distract a crying baby. Just perfect. Oh. Just like <laughs> put your wrist next to them and let them like poke and oh. prod and like, you know, turn the dial like that. That is a, a useful parenting tool. So I've used it a lot for that. And <laughs> Maybe that's why my daughter Sophia is so good at touch screens immediately. But also, every kid is good at touch screens because it's so super organic. So yeah, I don't know. It's another use out there for parents. And if if we're talking about like dream case wearables, mm-hmm. uh, I I wondered if I wouldn't mind wearing a ring, a smart ring, so much to bed mm-hmm. to track sleep because I do mm-hmm. think tracking sleep is important. If Fit, oh man, Fitbit, if Fitbit took its sleep tech and just put it on a <laughs> ring. How about wow. not wearing anything? I don't want to wear anything. I don't, I don't want to wear, wear any other devices either, when I'm going to bed. I agree. I'm not even I talking agree. about what I wear when I go to sleep. Like, I just don't want to wear anything about um, gadgets, yeah. gadget-wise. But there have been a bunch of, like, bed gadgets, right? Something that slips yes. beneath your pillow or yes. beneath, like, your mattress. So there, there's a lot of that there. Our video team is blushing. Listen, yep. I can't. I just I just mentioned things. What comes into your head is all Parental you. Parental advisory. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there, there, there's so many smarter things. Uh, wasn't there, 
what was the radar thing? Was that Amazon? The radar sleep tracker? No, that was Google. Uh, yeah. They were using its solely tech in the smart display right. to track your sleep, which some people God. call creepy. I love the premise that you don't have to wear anything gadgety yes. to bed to track. But your then sleep. your so things have to uh, have to watch you. So yeah, exactly. There's always a trade off. Um, <laughs> I, th I think uh, the the eventual solution is just like a terrifying robot at the foot of your bed that just watches you. you. Like that, like... Yeah, yeah. And if you move, it like moves with you. It's like, hey, still oh, up, no. still up. The Amazon robot. The Amazon Astro. robot. And it looks like oh, a Dalek no. from Doctor Who for some reason. That's uh, that's where we're headed, folks. Um, <laughs> any any big takeaways from the Apple Watch, Roland? Basically, buy it if you if you need a smartwatch and you have an iPhone. It's good. I mean, the mm -hmm. the SE is really good if you're more budget conscious. Um, but if you're looking to get the best smartwatch there is, mm -hmm. yeah, that this is the one. There what do go. you think about uh, people keep asking for like Android support eventually? And that is actually something that Apple is getting better at. Like I look at um, the Apple TV app now, which is on Roku devices. It's on game right. consoles. It is everywhere. I, yeah, people don't need to buy an Apple TV box anymore because right. you get all your iTunes stuff. You get pretty much all the advantages of Apple TV content anywhere. Yep. So yep. that's better for Apple because they want Apple TV Plus to be a success. But right. how about this thing? Do they care about opening this up to Android, do you think? I, 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 I don't know <laughs> if they ever will. Have they ever opened up like any no. other device to Android? No. So I, I mean, I got it iPods, like remember when iPods sure. first launched, they were Mac only, and then going to Windows and bringing iTunes to Windows was like, oh my uh, god, but that was such a pain. I can't believe it was a pain. Ugh. It was a pain, but I, yeah. it does seem like, hey, you guys have the best fitness gadget on the market yes. right now, and the best smartwatch. You just like look at Android watches; they are yeah. floundering. Like everything is suffering. It's been a a decade of failed Android watches. Uh, all Apple has to do is release an I wouldn't app say they all sing. failed, but okay. I get what yeah. you're saying. That we got, we got so hyped. We got so hyped over the currently yeah. circular display on the Moto yes, 360. The Moto I 360. remember the hype around that. It's like, guys, we are just like, we're just, you know, coming after scraps here. You know? It was so pretty. It, it was still really is. Um, it's just too basic as a system. Now, uh, mm -hmm. I, I do think that like, Android compatibility would be goals, but mm -hmm. I, I think Apple would have to think hard about how to because it, it just needs then it will have to you have to make someone poor 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 engineer over at Apple buy it. This an is Android Apple's phone the biggest company with... in the world. Apple's the biggest company in the world. What do you they're sitting on you have to bill, hundreds subject, of billions of dollars? Yeah. Subject this poor engineer to Android? How dare you? <laughs> how dare uh, no, you? They'll have to they'll have to figure out how it works, right? They have to figure yeah. out how to make all these features that work so seamlessly on mm -hmm. the watch have you know siri are they going to use siri or assistant are they going to you know like there's a lot of questions i there's think they stuff. have to answer yeah but i so, think people who knows? would uh, people would accept a bit of slow down a bit like less direct integration if like hey you could use this on an android phone um i'm looking at basically apple fitness plus you know and like these services apple has if they want their services to succeed they have to open it up to everybody and that's what they did with tv plus basically yeah, but Fitness Plus for now isn't even open to the entire iPhone ecosystem. I know. It's just I Apple know. Watch. So they had to start from there. And I think they will, they will first see Fitness mm. Plus open to iPhones before we see the watch open to Android. I mean, no, I think they have to keep it tied to, to Apple Watch. But if you open Apple yeah. Watch to Android, but, there's your path, you know? Well, we'll see. <laughs> We'll see what happens first. Yeah. If only Apple, uh, one of the biggest company, I forget if they're actually the biggest market cap at this point. Mm. If only Apple had enough money and you know power and engineering talent to yeah. if only build something for some Android. Money. If only. Yeah. Uh, maybe one day. <laughs> we'll see. Thanks, Shirley. Oh, well. We can cut there. Yeah. Okay, so the in the final show, the Twitch segment is going to go after this. Yep. So I'm just going to take us straight into other news, okay? <clears throat> okay. Let's move on to some other news. And uh, the big news is that there's so many events happening. Oh, so many. Okay. It's not just Apple. It's Google. It's Samsung. It's Sony? Yep. Everybody. Yep. What is... You tell me, Sherlyn. Like, what is going on? And why is everybody Basically... doing it this next week? Basically, I think uh, all the companies that I cover, specifically the three main companies I cover, all got together. They're like, how can we really screw with Sherlyn? How, like, this is October, all specifically baby. about her. 
Yeah. 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 And I also didn't want to like be too mean, but like there were definitely people <laughs> who were like, well, Techtober is over, right? I was like, ha! <laughs> Uh, who would yeah. why would you say that in the middle of TikTok? No one knows. Don't curse no us one, like that. You don't A you yeah, A you jinxed it and B like come on. There was always gonna be more. Come wait, come on, come on. Anyway, October 18th is Apple's MacBook event, like we talked about at the top of the show. October 19th is the Pixel <laughs> 6 event, which we talked about <laughs> last week. So we already knew a lot of this was coming. I don't wanna like point fingers at anyone. Samsung came in clutch with like an event October 20th. Oh my God. Called Samsung Unpacked Part 2. Part 2. We never knew it was a part one, <laughs> but okay, here's a part two. This is why and this is why I make fun of Samsung because they're like, what, what, you got you guys are having a party? We weren't invited to dude, party. Okay, we're gonna throw our own party. We're gonna throw our own party the day God. after your party, okay? Okay, but God. to be fair to Samsung, my never. sense. My sense is that they actually have had this date down for a while, even before Apple announced October 18th. But sure, then to be sure they fair did. to uh -huh. Apple again, they had October something else, I think, and then went with 18th because we're like, ah, I guess we'll get in before Google. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, Samsung, yeah. I already, so I don't know if like, I, we had that info under embargo. <laughs> We've known about Samsung's date for a bit. I'm just right, like, that's right. not a great idea, but fine. Apple uh -huh. announced after we knew about Samsung. Mm -hmm. So so really, Samsung didn't technically come in last. Sure. But no, because like, you're right. You know, it, it just publicly played out that way. And like, <laughs> poor things, all of you. Well, me. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. But if y'all are excited about industry events, hey, Next week's gonna be a very fun one. On the nineteenth, uh, on the eighteenth, come over to the Engadget YouTube channel. Davindra and I will be here to talk about Apple with you. We'll talk and on about the nineteenth, yes, on the nineteenth, will be myself and Jess Condit watching Google's live stream for the Pixel Six with you. On the twentieth, y'all can go watch Samsung on your own. You know, <laughs> uh, I don't expect anything super big out of the Samsung event. Mm -hmm. uh, I know a lot of rumors are around fan edition versions of things. Who knows? Yeah, uh, we'll see. But don't, don't forget Sony. Sony has something uh, Lord, coming Lord, on the twenty sixth, twenty fifth. I can't tell what their their dates, but there's going to be a new Sony Xperia product announcement. The thing yep. everybody has been waiting for: another Xperia phone. Oh, Sony! And also with the best names, like apparently, mm -hmm. what are we at the Sony Xperia one three four hundred tau? <laughs> 10 10 K something now. I don't even know mm -hmm. with the Xperia names, but thankfully I will be telling someone else to talk to Sony. Like I really oh don't my wanna, God. I can't anymore. I just can we can't. briefly let's just go over what do we expect for the Google event? Like Pixel, Pixel 6, 6. Yeah. More, I mean, but what? More camera, bigger screen. Okay. Yeah. So the big thing about the Pixel 6 was the tensor processor. And mm -hmm. we heard first about the tensor, I think last month uh which you wrote up google's about that own, yeah 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 mm -hmm. google's own um uh chipset right for mm -hmm. the for the phone so with its own chip the the company is able to do a lot of ai processors really well on the phone because it has a tensor processor unit in the chip um and then also photography is supposed to have a lot more improvements there's also uh, significant improvements to the camera hardware on the Pixel 6. So we're, we're you know, hoping to see what that will bring. We're going to learn more about the specs, basically, and uh, the, the CPU specs as well. The, I'm sorry, Tensor specs as well. Mm -hmm. um, and pricing and availability and all of that good stuff. Because everything else, we already know, right? We've seen these things. Google stuck one on its store display in the Chelsea <laughs> store in New York. You could go look at yeah. it all you wanted already. There's not that yeah. much to to wonder. It is coming. We know. It's it's a phone. Yeah. And it's for a... Samsung, are, are we thinking just more colors? Like I think that's the <laughs> just phone that's colors. That, that's that's the rumor. We need a whole event for that. Um, and Sony new Xperia phones. Um, yep. uh, okay. Okay. Yep. Sure. There you go. All the all the gadgets. <laughs> Never let it be known that nobody will ever say. What happened to Techtober ever again? <laughs> oh God! Don't. Oh my do God! It. Don't do it. It it never ends. In other news, too, we uh, hey, the Moto Edge is back, and we reviewed the hey. 2021 edition of the Moto Edge. Hey, I, yeah. I like the Moto Edge. Sure. 
it yeah and last year's moto edge was really all about like that dual curved screen you know because samsung didn't mm -hmm. do it a few years ago i guess um and this one actually returns this year to a flat screen uh a flat lcd but this is a 550 dollar or 500 dollar phone um for now mm -hmm. it jumps up to 700 dollars after like a like a promotional period mm -hmm. but for that price you're getting a screen that can go up to 144 hertz so there sure. you go if you Good. want to read about how meaningful that might be go check out the review by igor uh on the engadget team Hello. something else yeah. happened this week yeah we had some spacey news uh, I mean, listen, Captain Kirk went to space. He, uh, William Shatner oh, is the oldest person to reach did. space or at least the outer edge of space on a, on a Blue Origin rocket. So that was cool. That was nice to outer. see. So similar to what I guess Bezos <laughs> did, right? The uh -huh. outer edges of, of the Earth, uh, of the atmosphere. Yeah. All mm -hmm. right. All right. That's cool. Um, it's cool. Yeah. I was worried because this he is 90 years old. He's not a, you know, spring mm -hmm. chicken anymore. I do yeah. wonder, like... Imagine, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen that show review on, uh, oh man, this is actually, this actually would have been that, but the show review on Comedy Central, uh -huh. there, there is one sketch where they did a space tourism flight and yep. uh, a very old person died in the middle of the flight oh, and it's no. just a corpse flo floating around. No. I was like, oh my God, don't, uh, please don't, don't do that to William Shatner. Uh, he has blocked <laughs> pretty much everybody on Engadget due to a spat I'm from like 2015 yeah, uh yeah goodness. uh th there's a whole thing there's a lot of drama going on around yes, with william shatner this. but I, I love him as captain kirk and i've loved many of his other shows uh i do kind of wish he and leonard nimoy were able to do this together you know i feel like oh, that yeah. would have been the most fitting thing um but hey this is cool to see it shows mm -hmm. the uh like blue origin is actually doing the thing um of actually getting people to space. You just have to be very rich. Uh, mm. I, I see a note from our video team saying Nathan from Ted Lasso should go to space and stay there. How dare you? How dare you? How dare Never, you? Don't do that. Don't, don't, no. Mm. We will, we will talk about this. Nate's turn to we, the dark we can side talk about at that. some point. Yeah. We can talk about that. Yeah. Not yet. Um, <laughs> later on. Uh, there was lots of hardware news this week specifically acer had an event this week as well hey again once again techtober is not happening <laughs> never mind acer launch like usually has uh, a global event in october as well where it launches a slew of laptops sometimes mm -hmm. it launches wearables and and vr stuff this time around we got a 3d laptop davinder you want to tell me about this 3d laptop I mean, uh, sure, it's something we've heard about. <laughs> uh, it has glasses-free 3D technology from Spatial Labs. Mm -hmm. So the idea, it's a very unusual display that can, uh, I don't know, maybe like the 3DS. It's very similar. Okay. Um, but depending on how you're looking at it, it can like simulate 3D. Okay. I've seen this technology, and I forget if it was the same company, but I've seen this like previewed. Uh, with Asus laptops too, I believe, mm. like Asus ROG mm. laptops. So a couple of companies have been looking at this, and it's a cool idea for people, especially if they're working in 3D. If you're a 3D artist, the ability to see your model kind of projected in actual space is kind of cool. Right. Um, so that, that's the main thing. This is not for everybody, but it's a cool thing to have. Uh, yeah. I do think eventually, like, this is why we're working on AR glasses and everything. Like, eventually you want your um you want to just put on something that'll give you that ar view or 3d view or yeah. like honestly these days like you can just like pull out your phone and have your phone like let you walk around the 3d object which kind of gives you a lens to uh yeah. of ar so there, there are a lot of ways to do this i don't think this tech is going to go anywhere but it seems kind of mm -hmm. cool mm -hmm. yeah um, there's a bunch of other stuff that Acer unveiled as well, including a slew of eco-friendly Vero products that has sure. like, you know, laptops, towers, monitors, trade-in programs, etc. There's an antimicrobial product portfolio as well. Some Predator gaming products, some Chromebooks, some Concept D creator level notebooks and displays mm -hmm. and projectors. Oh my lord. Acer had an event, basically. Okay, y'all, go check out Engadget for the mm -hmm. for the pertinent details. If you're interested in Acer laptop too, this might be time to to see, or mm -hmm. or even any laptop, right? To see yeah. what's out there and compare prices and stuff like that. Let's take a look. Um, their gaming laptops, especially their like mid range gaming laptop line, I think is really good mm -hmm. and really solid. Yeah. So 
always worth keeping an eye on Acer. I know I think we tend to report more on Asus uh, just because they mm-hmm. they produce a lot more devices that we want to review. But don't don't discount Acer. How about that? Um, yeah. Another device that has been leaked <laughs> apparently is the HTC Vive Flow headset, oh which uh, there have been some leaked images <laughs> and. It looks like a giant pair, a giant pair of like bug eyed sunglasses, <laughs> I guess. Like apparently this thing is going to be a personal like home, a personal theater for you to sit back yeah. and watch video. Uh, maybe there will be some VR support. There's a lot we don't know. Uh, there were some leaked images. Uh, uh, what is funny is that after we saw these leaked images and people were yeah. like, hey, these are just uh, these are just stock photos. That they just photoshopped glasses on top of people. <laughs> Good photoshop. I don't even. Good photoshop. It's like, sure. What's funny about this is like because HTC hasn't come out as mm-hmm. of this recording to say anything yet, right? <laughs> we don't know if it's HTC that did this. Oh no, it's it absolutely HTC that did this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, dying. HTC Vive, HTC Vive, which is a separate company from like htc the phone company like it was a whole thing um uh, it was sad to see like what happened to htc because i feel like they pioneered a lot of design and great stuff uh, around android smartphones the htc one was like the first mm-hmm. smartphone i genuinely like really loved and then apple took so much of that design into all of their iphones the following um mm-hmm. you know htc vibe has to compete against facebook's unlimited bank account right so they can't <laughs> They can't afford to always like, you know, get real photos with actual working units and stuff like, but if you can, you know, get one of your good Photoshopping staff to just take a 3D, <laughs> take an image and like, you know, just put it, put it right over a model space. Uh, that's just as good, right? I, I think know. I don't I, I I I think it's funny as hell that they wouldn't just take their own photos but they just photoshopped it I, I it guess probably doesn't efficient. exist it doesn't exist right. like it's exactly. the thing like the final design so, of whatever these things are don't exist yet or take mm-hmm. your own stock photos but I guess yeah. it's cheaper to, to to buy them anyway that was uh that was circulating and that was just more fun news to add to the mix uh you know, according to the people that reported on this too apparently we're very close to the official announcement so uh you know, another thing for October, I guess. <laughs> anyway, if you guys want to hear or stay on top of all this news in October, you know, make sure to send us, well, no, make sure to read Engadget. And then also, if you have any thoughts for like mm-hmm. companies you want to see throw their names into the mix, you can always send it to us at, yeah. at podcast.engadget.com. Maybe, maybe keep an eye on Engadget today if you want to learn more about these HTC things. Like there's a lot or happening. Everything. Yeah, there's a lot happening. Everything, yeah. Everything's <laughs> happening all at once. Let's move on to what we're working on. Uh, I, I am in the middle of reviewing AMD's Radeon RX 6600, which are hmm. is going to be their cheapest GPU of the 6000 series okay. line. It's very confusing um, because I think they're aiming to like make these cards like three hundred and thirty dollars, but that's not going to happen. That's that's not how the GPU market works right now. Right. Uh, I was looking around online, the 6600 XT, which came out a okay. couple months ago and was supposed to retail for around $379, is currently going for like $700 to $800 online. Well, oh, because of the shortage, so this, yeah. this whole market is is just kind of doomed. So I don't know. I'm kind of working on this in my review. I don't quite know why AMD decided to release this model at all. Maybe it's mm-hmm. a way for them to reuse, like um, especially lower tier hardware, are basically yeah. rejects that you know from hardware that they tried to build for the newer for the better models maybe all the cores didn't work well or certain components didn't work well they get put in like a reject pile and maybe they had enough of those rejects to create a cheaper model that some people could Mm -hmm. enjoy i don't quite know this is not going to get a high score in my reviews but uh keep an eye out for that shirlin what are you working on Hey, you know, everything that's going on next week. Yeah, I'm working on all of that. Uh, I just finished this review. I'm working on, uh, you know, prepping for whatever's coming up, as well as some other reviews that uh, I can't really talk about. So I will just say a lot of people keep asking me on Twitter, just being like, hey, are you reviewing this yet? Hey, are you reviewing that yet? Like, guys, I, I my advice would just be to be like, hey, there's some publicly known information, certain dates and times are out there. So mm-hmm. just just those patterns in the past have been those dates are important. You just go look at them. That's all I can say. Mm-hmm. 
Awesome. Sage awesome. advice from me. <laughs> sage advice, uh, or the rare sage <laughs> advice. <laughs> Let's move on to our pop culture picks. I'll let you lead this one, Trillin. What really? do you got this week? Yeah, sure. All right. So got? instead of watching anything lately, because I simply refuse to get on the Squid Game hype train, I have been playing games. And uh, yes, some of them are very disappointing, like the this fucking, oh, sorry, this Candy Crush style <laughs> game. <laughs> Sorry, have been playing, um, but uh, but no, I've actually played, um, been playing two games recently that I thought were surprisingly mm -hmm. good. One, uh, and and our video team's gonna hate me because I'm gonna reverse the order on this. The oh, first boy. one is everyone knows this game is Crossy Road, Crossy Road, Crossy Road. Uh -huh. Um, it's fun. It's basically jaywalking as an Did animal. You just discover Crossy Road. I only started playing it like this week. <laughs> This game is Frogger. Um, just... This game is Frogger. Yeah. It's not just jaywalking as an animal, but yeah, okay. Yeah, it's pretty fun uh, because it's very <laughs> mindless. But no, that's that's my like what I've been playing. At, I want. I want to. Wonder, I wonder what would happen if we put you in front of like a Frogger machine or some of the like maybe. '80s yeah. games. Yeah. Gosh, maybe. I mean, who knows? You would but, just be but... there forever. We never. You'd yeah, never I leave. would. I used to play like those spot the difference between the pictures games in the, the bar games. Arcade. Yeah, I love those. I love those. Every time I'm in a bar, my, I'm forcing my friends to like huddle over there and watch with me and play with me. But anyway, um, one like my favorite, I, I don't know. I find it so morbid that when this chicken dies, I keep laughing. Like every time I throw her into a train, I'm like, ha ha, bitch. Like I just, <laughs> I don't even know why I do that. But I'm just like, okay, hop on to suicide. Anyway. Um, that's the morbid animal game I've been playing. But the other game that I, I want to mm -hmm. shout out, and you're, you're less likely to have heard of it, is this game called Kitty Cat Tycoon. Um, I've heard of Kitty Cat Tycoon, yeah. It's so cute. Um, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Little so, like little cat slave labor, apparently? Yeah, you know? basically, it's slave uh -huh. labor with cats. Mm -hmm. And every time you force them to do something, they meow. So... <laughs> It's so you set up this assembly line. They're supposed to make furniture. You're supposed to upgrade your equipment. You're supposed uh -huh. to hire managers to watch over the staff so the staff don't slack off. It's very weird. Is the, also, are the managers dogs? Like, uh, no, are the, the managers, managers just more are cats? Cats in clothes. They're fat cats. The managers yeah. wear clothes. <laughs> so there you go. I guess when you make more money, you can afford some fits. But anyway, uh, there, there's a whole very... like lecture in capitalism going on in this game. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's very it's very relaxing though, which is like when you're not stressing out thinking about capitalism. Uh, uh, it's... You're stressing out like a on a production line game. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's but it's relaxing. Like there's no there's targets to meet, but no deadline, which is fun. And then you can play like you can leave it on the background. It'll still keep going. But when you come in, you're you're more productive and stuff. You make more money yeah. when you're actively tapping things. You know, the there, there's a the lot of track. there's a lot of reporting out there about like how entire generations of kids who have been basically trained to be overachievers uh, <laughs> are, are a little broken, you know, yeah, because uh, yeah. that they've been trained to go to school and everything i was part of that system i think you were too yeah. sherlin yep, so uh it, it, it is funny it is funny to see you gravitating towards this thing this is it's a yeah. great idol game though i don't need to think too much about anything i just poke at the ones that have arrows on them but anyway mm -hmm. uh what i love most though about this game uh, let, let's ignore the fact that it, in principle it's a very weird game mm -hmm. um i love the animation it's very cute i love the um kind of weird broken english instructions and also the cat sounds i never thought i would enjoy hearing cats meow so much every time you put them they come really? meow. like i i want to play it uh for you guys where actually. do you play is it a phone game yeah so this is an app that i've checked is on both ios and android and i'm gonna maybe turn on some of the sound here can you hear that <laughs> uh-huh okay so yeah Enjoy listening to that. Right. This is this is what I imagine going is going on in your head, Trillin. Yes. When we're talking about serious <laughs> things. Uh, it's like anyway. in the Simpsons when they look into Homer Simpson's brain. Like, what is happening? Do 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 do. 
Yeah. Yep. This is my brain, y'all. So for an inside look at the way Sherlin's brain works, check out Kitty Cat Tycoon. Be productive <laughs> while meowing. Uh, let me just say, it's good having real cat meows around. I have three cats now. So oh. <laughs> when we're on the couch, uh, I always have like two cats within arm's length. It's mm -hmm. really great. It's a good thing to have, especially during these troubling times. Go adopt some pets, people. If mm -hmm. things are hard okay. for you right now, you yeah. have you have a fun one for us though. I'm in interested in this one. Oh yeah, I do have a fun one. I saw a press screening of Dune, a movie Ooh. we've been waiting for for a very long yes. time. Denis Villeneuve's Dune, and uh, yes. I have to say, uh, I I love this movie. This movie is very long. It's very big. It's very epic. I've never really been into the Dune books or anything. I've tried to read it so many times. It's it mm -hmm. felt. It's just like kind of a slog for me. Like I just was not really uh, entranced by the story. But what is really cool about this film is that, you know, Denis Villeneuve is a, he is a guy who always aims big with his science fiction, like Arrival in Blade Runner uh, 2049. Um, is it 2049? Um, but yeah, 2042. I have to look that up. Mm. Um, but his like, I love the way, I love all of his films. And certainly the way he approaches science fiction is very like, um, it's on a grand, grand scale, you know? And okay. I, I think being able to tell the story of Dune while showing like the scale of alien planets and enormous ships that, you know, um, you know, house thousands of people, the sheer weight of this film really comes through in this adaptation. Uh, my only big gripe with it is that, man, it is, uh, it is half the book. It does feel like I, literally yeah. half the book. So yeah. half the first book of Dune. So when it ends, I'm like, that that's it? Like, we're not, <laughs> what's happening? What's, what's going to happen right. to everybody? And uh, ostensibly, like, we'll see the conclusion in Dune Part 2 at some point. Dune Part 2 has not been greenlit. So it is a weird thing where if this movie is not successful enough, um, this will be all we'll see. Uh, maybe eventually, like, it could turn into a TV show or something. There is a Dune like side story TV show coming to HBO Max eventually, but a TV version of this story would not have the same like budget or scale or the same actors. And I just, I love like watching this movie and just letting it sweep over me. And it's just like really, really cool shit. That's, that's really all I have to say about it. It is like, it's Oscar Isaac in space armor, looking like a, a goddamn Zendaya. space daddy. And Z Zendaya, Zendaya is in it for three. Yeah. Zendaya is in it for Zendaya, three minutes. Apparently, yeah. yeah. Oh it's not no! Papaya. Only yeah, she's 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 barely in it. Um, the point in which you would see more Zendaya, the movie ends. So it, it is very strange. Um, and certainly there are like arguments you can make too about Dune being a white savior narrative and a story about this essentially about middle eastern characters that has no middle eastern actors to like it, yeah. it there's a lot of like cultural borrowing and whatnot there we can have that conversation but i think yeah. as a science fiction experience yeah this movie really really succeeds and i just would love to see uh, i would love to be guaranteed that we'd see the story continued um it seems like what they should have done is what they did with lord of the rings where Peter Jackson just basically got this really, really crazy deal to make all three of those movies at once. And mm -hmm. I think it was New Line at the time was just like, hey, sure, we'll take a big swing because we're looking mm -hmm. we're looking for like big new franchises. And that really worked out well. I wish they had just greenlit both of these films. And like we were right. I knew for sure next year or something we would see Dune Part Two. That's my only hesitation. But uh, if you like science fiction, if you like thoughtful science fiction certainly like this is a slow burn movie too like there there are action sequences but this is more about the texture of being in an enormous you know alien world um right. go see this on the biggest screen that you can safely that, that's the thing i'll say for everybody it's going to be on hbo max uh next week um i think it's next week when this movie uh, premieres uh, october 22nd so you'll be able to watch at home but you will not get the sense of like what this movie is accomplishing unless you're watching it on an enormous screen so mm. i you know i sat for two and a half hours this movie is very long going back into the real world after watching dune is like man real world is so much smaller <laughs> it's a lot less <laughs> epic there are no giant sandworms trying to eat you know there aren't any giant oh. ships there's no cool space armor it does the reality of this movie is so like heightened that it makes mm -hmm. the real world just seem duller in comparison yeah. So it's one of those movies. I think it's worth seeing on the big screen if you can. Uh, and we'll be writing about it and gadgets soon too. 
I want to dive yeah. into the sound design of this movie because oh. it is like really, really cool kind of what they do. So I'm, I was hyped for this movie. It kind of lived up to my expectations. Uh, I'm just, I hope we see a sequel, you know, or the, the second half of the story. It's not even a sequel. It is the, the end of the story. Yeah. You know, maybe it's a, maybe it's a good way to get people to buy the book, you know, maybe, maybe <laughs> uh, Dune has been around since the sixties, you know, yeah, but it, it, it is you, like, yeah. If you ha- don't have a copy mm-hmm. and you're like itching to to resolve the 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 whatever I've tried reading there. Dune so many times. Uh, if anybody wants to give me tips, sure. Uh, <laughs> I I may like I I can tell what's gonna happen. Uh, it's more like I want to see more of this world with these actors mm. and with this like level of budget and scale. I hope we get to see the rest of that story. But hey, if you're a sci-fi fan, if you were wondering like if this movie would live up to it. Um, check it out uh one of my favorite writers right now is walter chaw and he did a great mm. review of this film over at film freak central so go check that out and that's all i got did, did you end up seeing squid games Sherlyn? nope really <laughs> yeah really maybe been, maybe instead of playing the capitalist Look, kitty hellscape game you it's should relaxing. watch a show about that i hear <laughs> all i hear about squid game is i'm not gonna be relaxed for it so <laughs> i mean yeah i'm just gonna play a spa game for a little bit let me just yeah go play a spa spa game yeah that's a little better uh okay that is it for this week um (laughs) let's take a pause here let's do some q a and we have a guest coming in we still need to talk about the we also want to yeah we can also talk about you know ted lasso's finale with you know now that we're in q a no you can't no you can't can't. no you can't can't. yes we can i haven't seen it i haven't seen it Oh, well, I mean, we can't spoil everything, but do you, okay, do you want to talk about the Ted Lasso finale since you're here? Nah, I'm kidding. They um, did telegraph a lot of, like, what was happening. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I know that, like, stuff happens with Nate. You could see that oh, yeah. Rupert was talking to Nate at the funeral and basically mm-hmm. saying, like, you're too good for this. So, mm-hmm. like, it's pretty. No, crazy. there's there's a lot. There's a lot that's happened in Telegraph. People's shadows. What is going on, chat room? I hope you're all excited for Dune. Hello, yeah, chat. Everybody. This is the time that we're talking directly to you. So if you have oh, any man. Jonathan you Anderson's. About... Let me just it... say here Jonathan Anderson's comment The Dune movie from the 1900s <laughs> was great. He's correct. No, that was a Dune movie correct. from the 1900s. It is true. Oh, no. But that oh, is my God. So painful but to think. The that thing way. is, like, I, I have a feeling for how old Jonathan Anderson is. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. uh, you, I've heard people, like I've heard teachers say that they're teaching, you know, like young kids um, who were born, you know, maybe mm-hmm. 10 or so years ago, who talk about, you know, the 80s being the 1900s. No, no, or, definitely. You know, something happening in the 90s being, there was, oh, that there was a the TikToker. 1900s. There was a TikToker talking about like 90s romantic comedies. It's vintage. Look at this vintage comedy I'm checking out. And everyone was like, Jesus yeah just like let me just, just turn into dust yeah um there there was also the story of uh, computer science and like c- computer teachers um basically noticing that their students they're like college level students people who are studying computer science people who know about computers do not understand file folder structures yes because they I never saw that. had this to was so sad. deal with this it pissed me yeah. off. i was like what yeah like, okay because you never have to deal with it way Mm-hmm. Right. Wait, I and so it. is that beautiful? Is that mm-hmm. specifically because they've done everything on Google Drive like their entire lives? Well, it's Google Drive, but it's also like since uh, has on, now, yeah. Since Windows XP, you save something, it goes to your documents, and same for Mac, it goes to your documents. Yeah. You know, it goes to doc. It, it is like in specific choose, folders. Yeah. You don't need to like go to your C colon slash uh, program file slash uh, directory yep. and yep. Uh, set all that up. So. Yep. 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 I mean, like, in, in, in now it goes to documents or downloads for me. Those are the only two folders, like, I look at. I yeah. only look, yeah, it's just, like, my downloads folder. It's just this long-ass list of things I've downloaded. It's a garbage <laughs> pile, but what I need is right up, up there. I don't even, I, I still do organize shit because it's a relic of my upbringing. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, that, yeah. that was the way things were, it was just like, hey, file, Fold, files go into folders, and folders yes. are nested in directory structures, and that's it. That, yes. It's not a hard concept. And they're beautiful. It is funny, and honestly, I don't think about it too much these days either, unless I'm like organiz- organizing photos or music or something. Yes. If I'm installing a program, 
it just kind of goes. It kind of gets yes. installed. If I'm installing a game, I make sure it goes on my game well, SSD. Like that's yeah. the main thing. It's because some of us had to do things like Individual, you'll know this yeah. I don't know yeah. but you'll know when like you, you used to install fonts back in Windows, I don't know what. You had to drag it to the fonts folder, which is in Windows program files, X whatever, and then like I absolutely did files. that for school yeah. projects yeah. because I, I thought yeah. like, oh, this is like part of me like putting effort into this school project. Let's download an entire Right. new font specifically for this one now thing. it just i just it's just a whole different workflow it's not no it doesn't even exist as a workflow anymore which is oh so sad um anyway i i i, I lament that i i i want it back so i want okay, it so I've listen got... th things are going to go away things are going to disappear and bad elements of computing should go away that's evolution right um yeah. it's just hey if you're if you're setting to be in computer science and you want to build programs you, you, you should know what a files. freaking no, directory is. You know how the you things to, work, yeah. but it's understandable why that's not always the case. Um, and just for so you guys know, I've asked, I told our guests that we've wrapped a little early, so she may come on like 1115 if she can. Okay. okay. So mm -hmm. we've got a few comments that were banked from all of this, all of the things that we talked about. So mm -hmm. some are from mm -hmm. Apple, Hi. some are from other news and such. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. So the first one is from Buddy305Love. Hope they're still around. Uh, I tried the Apple Watch uh, Series 4 for about six months. Mm -hmm. uh, it felt like I was missing some things. AOD was a killer for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was AOD? I, I didn't always on display. I don't really oh, care yeah. that much about whether I have an AOD on a watch. Because yeah. the SE yeah. doesn't have one, and that's been my main for the longest time now. It's never been and a big problem for me. Yeah. Because the lift to wake is pretty responsive. But mm -hmm. I will say when testing the Series 7, I tested it only with AOD on. And... Uh, it's nice to just have that all like it's it's always telling me something it's always saying something mm -hmm. when i'm working out i don't need to like keep keep raising my wrist to see how much time has passed in the set or whatever so it, i see the pros and cons for sure i don't mm -hmm. mind without though yeah mm -hmm. uh meanwhile we have uh charles potts coming in who says that sleep tracking is overrated um <laughs> yeah. maybe maybe <laughs> When it works, though, it's lovely. Like knowing how, like the cycles. I recently spent time with people who have a newborn kid that yeah, sleeps, yeah. sleeps in forty-five minute cycles, and just knowing how that works for even yeah. myself is it's good to know. Uh, listen, if you have a baby, then you have to you have to understand for sleep sure. cycles. You got to know like yeah. when to take them or let them like sleep longer. Yep. Like there are certain when things you can there, go but... do stuff. Yeah, but I do Although think like. I... Mm -hmm. okay. I just really understand. I really identify with. Uh, I think Sherlyn's anxiety while testing sleep tech stuff because sure. you're, you're like is it working is it working is it working right my, like, my one advice i do the same thing <laughs> yeah uh if i'm like downloading something you yeah. know like oh i have my computer on in my room especially like when is it working took forever <laughs> yeah i would like go over there at, like three in the morning be like right when torrents would quit on you yet? halfway yep. <laughs> yeah yeah uh, and, like, what I are you talking about nobody Nobody ever downloaded torrents over here. Yeah, I think yeah, I, I never okay. did but download torrents. I never got a cease and uh, no, but, uh, desist. What are you, you know, talking torrents, about? Torrents for uh, open source what, projects. You, you've you heard know, from your big, friends. Yeah. yeah very yeah, yeah, yeah. big and very legal open source projects. That's how projects, my friends so shared stuff about. with me. I don't know what you're talking about. Exactly. Just, they're, they're homework projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, Joshua uh, Peck says you're having a baby in two weeks. Congrats. congrats. But also sleep uh, now while you can. Sleep now. Uh, come up with a schedule with your partner. That That is my main thing. Like. Time for them to sleep. Time for you to sleep. Yeah. Um, I, there is some like given how important sleep is to us, and how like there is a potential there for if somebody can optimize the perfect sleep cycle, right? Like make sure, hey, if I if my gadget lets you sleep for five or six hours a night, but you get a perfect, fully restful sleep with like right, the like ideal the amount cycle, of REM time, yeah. that would change the world. You know, that would like at least for people like me is like. I need more time to do stuff. That would be kind of mm -hmm. kind of interesting. Uh, my one advice for you, Sherlyn, or one piece of mm -hmm. advice, because I used to test the sleep tracking stuff all the time. The, do not put so much power in the device because I, I see what you're doing. You're waiting. You're waiting till the last minute. You're doing you're doing like, OK, I'm going to do the sleep tracking night. And by the time you get there, <laughs> you're just like, this is going to fail. I'm never going to sleep. It's never going to work. And uh it is kind of like self perpetuating You mean the mental way. stress of it exactly. will, will keep that. Well, for me, it's yeah. less of that and more of an OCD thing. It's more oh, like yeah. if I have, yeah. So, so that's like, okay. So, okay. This, I had planned to uh -huh. talk about this during the segment, <laughs> but I forgot. Um, I don't know about y'all, but when I mm -hmm. sleep, I'm like, Ugh, 
or like what? Bleh. And like my my okay. wrist was all I over my you, face. I thought you said that you slept like a perfect silent angel. Yeah. N nowadays though, like I have to like be face down, and so that when uh -huh. I'm face down, sometimes my face is on my wrist, and it's like mm. ugh, like just just, and then like uh -huh. I just can't do that with a uh -huh. watch on my you wrist. You can't do it with a watch, feels... right? Yeah. I'm just so you not need like an ankle bracelet or something. <laughs> no, well. Can you put Maybe. it on your ankle? I don't. I mean, hmm. my my ankle never hits my face for sure. Exactly, exactly. That's a better um, experience. <laughs> but but no, the idea that I that it, it forces me to feel like I have to sleep in a specific mm -hmm. posture position, mm -hmm. and that's why it it keeps me up, right? Like, it shouldn't be. I, I think forcing people to sleep with like such a big device is not a great idea either. Like there yeah. should be. We can stuff sensors into tiny, tiny little things right now. So, like, give me, that's give me something that's a seamless. Like a little ring. A, toe a ring, ring is good, ring. but I, to oh, me, anything, a toe ring. <laughs> anything that puts pressure on my body is the thing. I was like, yeah. I don't, I want to be free when I'm trying to Agreed. sleep. Okay, so Agreed. 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 Um, maybe like a light bracelet, something very tiny, or something you can tuck into something, or something that hides under your bed. Like a hair. Like a hair. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Patch. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Ben, did you have more questions? Yes. Bank? While uh, you're looking, hi to Wilso, hi to Jesse K, hi to um, I mean Jonathan Anderson. We've been talking to Rob Langley. Hi to uh, crap, I saw someone. Buddy three hundred five love says they're back and that they said they love us. We love you back. Uh, so we yeah we've got another couple of uh, things to talk about. So uh, while we were talking about uh, Apple Watch and everything, Jonathan Anderson actually uh, said something about like what if the Apple Watch Series Eight or the next Apple Watch was um, a you know, one of those foldable displays that was a just flip. The, <laughs> no that, well not a foldable not a, a like a roll one of the oh, rollable a display one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and it's a slap bracelet. <laughs> and it's a slap bracelet. Yeah. I think that I think would we actually be great. That. I would love that. I think I've seen that one CES actually. <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous. A lot of people like yeah. I, I think I've CES made at least like wild. one one young device maker cry because I said his like bracelet smartwatch was not not a great <laughs> product. Oh well. Devendra. Oh well. And then uh, not everyone's gonna love your gadgets. People get used to it. Yes. <laughs> One comment that I know Dev is going to really like. Uh, uh -huh. Gabriel uh, says that they want the same VR glasses from the movie Possessor. Mm. You know, I don't want them to do the thing <laughs> the Possessor <laughs> does. But yeah, that movie rules. That movie absolutely <laughs> rules. Um, it, it's very cool tech. What's going on? Uh, I see some baby sleep advice there. Yeah. The, the best advice is sleep when the baby sleeps, and yeah, that, that's the main yep. thing. Uh, my my thing is if you if you can withstand a baby crying for you know minutes on end uh, for a long while, do sleep training as soon as you can. Get them used to like sleeping on their own because that's like the big big thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, people are mentioning that there is mattress based sleep sensors that there are, track your yeah. sleep. Yep, there are plenty of those. Mm -hmm. Lots of brands do those that. Those are good ideas. <laughs> how how old is your bed, Trillin? How old is your mattress? Because there's a lot of tech involved in all this stuff now, too. Yes, I got one. Uh, mine's my current one's about five, almost five mm -hmm. years old, which is fine. Is it a it's normal like, mattress or is it like a yeah, startup it's a mattress? Very basic, nothing <laughs> fancy, very cheap mattress that I don't mind. And okay. I will upgrade to. I was looking at a purple or a cast purple. Or one of yeah, those. any of those. So, uh, yeah. treat yourselves, folks. We spend a third of our lives sleeping. So, if you if you want to have a better sleep, it is worth investing in that. Uh, yep. I have a hybrid from purple. I think. Yeah, um, I want to get a purple. I think the hybrids are the best. The hybrids are good because they're like springs plus foam. Yes. This yeah. is mattress mattress tech talk. Can you hit snooze? Are there, yeah. are there any um, mattresses that are uh, more modular? Like you can take the foam out if you want to take the foam out, or you can do something like that. Because like, I, I think I, that's too much. That's too much trouble. You can always like get a mattress and then get like a foam topper. topper and toppers, yeah. yeah, toppers are like you can do that okay. too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So uh, our, we're we're burning a little time here, but our video producer Julio really wants to say <laughs> something. So. I need to ask you, Julio, um, what, what is your sleep situation? Hey, 
Um, so I just <laughs> bought a uh, new mattress. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And it smells kind of funky. Every new mattress smells funky. No, but like... Yeah. yeah. It what does it smell like? like? What? Like okay, funky, yeah. Funky. Like a... I, I got it. Went through the door. <laughs> Uh-huh. I was like, did a dog poop in the mattress? Okay, oh! yeah, no, because there's a, Sometimes there's a it big smells di- like that, though. Yeah. There's a big difference between, like, chemical off-gassing and booty. Yeah, yeah. But no, I don't think... I think you meant duty. <laughs> duty? But, uh, well, you say booty, booty also has a smell of <laughs> yeah, booty. Anyway. Okay, and, and where does um, the booty come from, Sherlyn? <laughs> I have I have smelled that smell every now and then. I don't know it, what it is. Uh, and I don't mean in the toilet. You, you I smell mean, the... Like, sometimes yeah. new furniture does come with smell like that and i don't smell truly i don't know but uh from. julio what kind of mattress is it do you want me to you want me to box them you want me to <laughs> yeah dox like, them. this is where we're at like like straight up dookie all right so it's dream cloud <laughs> from uh, i've never heard of dream cloud what the yeah they they dream took a dump in your mattress it's yeah the, um... okay uh julio did this uh, mattress fall off the back of a truck <laughs> yeah so yeah. i i'm gonna give you a quick review they didn't mm-hmm. ring the doorbell. They just left it up front. Mm. The smell oh, was like straight up bitches. dog mm. poop. And then the box was kind of cracked open. So I'm like, okay. Did a, wow. Did, is, like what happened? So, so far the experience mm. has been terrible. I left it outside. <laughs> Can't you return backyard. it? Like all, the, all those things let you return them if you don't like it, right? Uh, uh, well, apparently you have a year to yeah. return it because they're that confident. That's why we bought it. But... Uh-huh. I just want to know: Is it normal for the that is not normal? Smell, like no. some, somebody the has uh, shouldn't punk smell you. so bad. Yeah, yeah. And somebody also, something you. like a mattress. Like I, I care a lot about the hygiene of my products, yep. especially yep. when it comes to something you're sleeping on with minimal mm-hmm. clothing every night, uh, with mm-hmm. only sheets between you and your your skin and that thing. Mm-hmm. So they left it out with the box open and and destroyed. That's it's that's like not good. The box was in rough shape, you know what I mean? Like okay. It was Chat like... room, let's have a let's have a poll. Should Julio return his mattress? If anyone listening oh, yeah. works for Dream mattress. Cloud. <laughs> Jonathan Anderson and Joshua Pack both said they would return yeah. it. Smells anything discolorations like yeah, out of here. Like it's mm-hmm. like I <laughs> It's been over 24 hours. Oh, okay. okay. And the dog poop smell is still there. Um, so I, I don't, don't know. know if that's going to go away. Like, the, And that's, <laughs> that's absolutely one away. of those things that I uh-huh. would like stick with because I'm yeah. like, I am not someone nope. who returns They're things. supposed to. I am to not a complainer. And return just, your like, stuff. live with the dog poop ma- mattress for way too long. And make sure they make it easy for you because you don't want to have to like be responsible for like pack- repacking it and everything. So like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just get yep. them to bring, come pick it up. Come pick it up. And I, right. I don't know if I'd go with them again. Uh, hybrid mattresses, folks. Get a, get a good mattress. Do not sleep on a futon if you're an oh. adult. What are you doing? Thank you. Next call. Unless please. you really have to. <laughs> Unless you have to. So we are still waiting for a guest to come on so we can talk We're about and process all of the Twitch hack news. Mm-hmm. So if anyone in the chat has questions about general tech things. Or the Twitch wanna... hack. Yeah. Or the Twitch hack. Yeah. So yeah. if you want, if you have questions about the Twitch hack that you want to see us get to in this segment, um, you can do that. You can also suggest mattresses to me because I'm going to be in the march uh, in the market for a mattress uh, in the next few months. Uh, I've hey. seen some people suggest uh, Nectar mattress. Um, that's what is a good it? one. Casper Wave mattress. I don't Casper, even know Casper. That that, that's like their new one. Casper was like the first one to do the like you know bed in a box thing. So. Oh yeah, be- believe me, I remember yeah. all of the podcast commercials. All the podcast commercials. I did end up buying uh, one of the Instagram beds. Uh, I forget the name. Is it August? It, no, that's a smart line. Uh, it's one of those beds that basically lock together using the pressure of wood kind of sitting together. Uh, it's amazing. Bed tech has gotten really cool, folks. There's no screws in my bed. It's weird. Should I change my Amazon password? Always change your Amazon passwords. <laughs> I have a question I mm-hmm. uh, from Chris Reardon. He already reached out to me before this mm-hmm. today to ask about assistive touch on the Apple Watch. Mm-hmm. And I've been trying it out, and I just can't really get the <laughs> watch to detect the gestures just yet. 
Uh. I just feel like we need to, I need a bit more time to test it, Chris. And I know you've Mm -hmm. already asked me about this yesterday. So give me a bit more time to test this Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll let you know. What is assistive touch supposed to be? Assistive touch is a feature, uh, I believe, from watchOS 8 onwards that will let you interact with the Apple Watch with one-handed gestures. So you can Mm, tap, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. double tap, clench, double clench to do things mm-hmm. um, oh, that's really cool that's cool yeah that's cool i've been it's it's uh one of the things that i've been talking well meaning to test out and it just doesn't seem to work yet so i would just oh, say that's a bummer let's i i mean i'm my plan chris was to talk to apple to get them to explain to me how to get it to work just because it's not working for me right mm-hmm. now so bear with me while i figure that out yeah that's a big thing and uh i, I believe our guest is on now hello manda Yay. hello can you hear us i can hear you just fine can you hear hello. me okay yes, yes we can hear you uh can you tap your mic very gently just to make sure that you're coming through yeah it sounds like your mic. computer mic mm. oh no okay. okay it is it's all good and so, hello if you yeah, could, go ahead uh start your recording when you're ready all right. Let me see. Oh, goodness. Of course, it doesn't want to work. Why would it want to work? Okay. Take okay. your time. Yeah. Take your time. Chat room. This is Amanda yeah. Farrow. Hi. Me a doing a full intro- introduction once we do the podcast segment. Let's hope oh. that it works now. Yes, we are working. <laughs> Yay. Hooray. Great. Do we want to clap again? Uh, yes. Um, but before that, we mm-hmm. say hi to Omar Carranza, who said that, uh, hello, team at Engadget. I watch from Mexico. Thanks, Yay. Buddy. And um, a name that I sadly can't read because I don't read Arabic, who says mm-hmm. hello from Egypt. Hello. We've, we've got a good international audience. I do appreciate yeah, that. I'm, we yeah, really do. Yeah. I, I like um, seeing people from all over the world. One last thing, uh, Chris. I got the system to recognize my gestures, but I still can't use it to navigate the mm. interface. So that's another. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now that's the next step for me <laughs> to figure out. So let's, let yeah, I'll be back. We'll, Check back in. All right. Cool. All right. Okay. So yeah, let's do another sync. So everybody who's watching, this is mm-hmm. really one of the behind the scenes things that we do. It's this just makes it way easier for me to edit. Uh, we're going to like sync all of the audio, and then we're going to get into the Twitch segment. Again, if you have any questions about the Twitch segment, if you have anything that you want us to talk about, you can put it in the chat, and I'll see if we can steer the conversation in that direction. But we're not going to be able to talk directly to the chat during this segment. So if everybody is recording, Matt, are you recording? I am definitely recording. Okay, everyone is already recording, so let's resync in three just make Two. a sound uh, after we're done with the countdown. Yes. That's like, yeah. yeah. Clap mm-hmm. your hands, snap your fingers, whatever. In three, two, one. Okay. Let's go on with Twitch. I'll bring it. Okay. So I'm going to reintroduce this segment. And then at the end, we'll do the, the final like credits and everything too. Yep. But cool. <clears throat> One piece of news we couldn't get to last week uh, was a major hack on Twitch where apparently all of Twitch, the source code, data, uh, revenue figures, like everything from Twitch going back several years was leaked onto the internet. And I really want to like dive into to see like what this means for the gaming economy, what this tells us about streamers. So joining us to chat about this is Manda Farrow co-host and producer of the Virtual Economy Podcast. Hey, Amanda, how's it going? Hello, it's going fantastic. How are you? Doing well. And, uh, you know, this seemed like a pretty big deal. Uh, What was your first reaction when you heard this news last week? My first reaction when I heard this news last week was, I'm sorry, they took everything? They took everything. Including the source code. Yep. Oh, no. (laughs) That was genuinely my first reaction was, (laughs) what? Oh, no. The yeah. everything of, of the the quote that was given i think it says the entirety of twitch.tv and for me this is the first time i'm seeing that quote and i'm still processing mm-hmm. it and i'm just like what yeah, everything. everything yeah proprietary so, sdks records everything yeah including some data that includes like a steam competitor mm-hmm. which was wild i sat down <laughs> when i read that i'm like i'm sorry whoops <laughs> What are we doing? Okay, this is some Amazon shenanigans, clearly. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How how can a how can something on this scale happen? Like, wouldn't there be mm-hmm. protections in place? Like, do we know how it happened at all? I don't think that we have any any concrete information coming from Twitch just yet. Mm-hmm. But I know that Infosec Twitter was a buzz about this and mm-hmm. talking about how profound this hack yeah. was. And mm-hmm. uh, as we know, at the same time, you know what what happened with Facebook as well with Facebook going down with their DNS being essentially rerouted. Mm-hmm. You know, we had some big, we had some big hacks last week, which was, mm-hmm. it was quite devastating. From what I understand, Twitch knew that there were mm-hmm. security issues and they didn't do anything about it. They were informed by their security people and they're like, okay, well, cool. you know, we got other things to worry about. We'll, we'll like deal with profitable. it when we're going to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We're, uh. we're Twitch. What does it matter? What does it matter? By the way, this is a former IT guy in me coming out here. Like this is, this is what happens every time there's a major hack, like either the IT people or external security people are like, Hey, fix this. This is going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in growth mode right now. Don't worry Mm -hmm. about us. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Put it on the list. (laughs) Put it on the list. Put it in Jira. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. That's right. So, (laughs) It, it does kind of show like, were they, yeah, they're in growth mode. They're just preparing so much. They just want to be a success. Is this basically part of the problem of being, you know, focused on success and growth at all costs and not thinking about like the, the overall health of your platform? Because it's certainly not just Twitch that is guilty of this, no. but this is one of the biggest leaks we've, I've ever seen. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. And I think that because there inter- there were people inside the company saying, no, this is going to be a problem. And mm-hmm. it's not even just the problem with the hack. It's the problem with the hate raids yeah. that we've been seeing. And those hate raids have been around for a long time. And it, raids had been abused for years. But the hate raids especially started really kicking mm-hmm. up. You know, can you, last can you year. explain like what a hate raid is and kind of how sure. that what a raid is too on Twitch? Yeah, so on Twitch, a really great way to go and end your stream or even in the middle of a stream is to go over and hit slash raid. And usually mm-hmm. you just go raid your friends. Sure. You go and and send the love over to, Aww. you know, you bring your community over to your friend's stream and be like, here's my community. I'd mm-hmm. like to add my community to yours. So and all the people take watching care your of stream them. go to another stream. Basically. That's right. Everybody that's sitting on my stream will go to another stream. Now, how hate raids have worked is that it is bots following usually women and people Mm -hmm. of color, especially women of color. It happened. It has Mm -hmm. happened to an exorbitant amount of times. Exactly. Like I've been bot raided, which was bad enough, but I've never been hate raided because I'm a white woman. Mm -hmm. It's just it hasn't happened. But I've I've seen it happen to really good friends of mine. Um, one of the people that was at the forefront of the day off Twitch, you know, wreck it Raven was being hate rated all the time. So that's, you know, bots end up following, they send through hateful messages, misogynist messages, racist Mm -hmm. messages, just lots and lots of hate. And they overwhelm the moderators because normally on Twitch, you have a moderation team. You have Mm -hmm. like one or two people. If you are a smaller streamer like me, you know, I have sub a thousand followers. So I have like a tiny little moderation team and Mm -hmm. they're just my, they're just my pals. Um, Folks like Raven have a team of like 10 people in and out of their chat at any time. And the hate raids made it impossible to keep up with all of the messages, to keep up with all of the bots and putting everything in follower mode was really challenging because that helps limit your growth because right. people that right. you're not friends with can raid you. And sometimes you get raided by huge streamers and that's really growth positive because mm-hmm. you'll get more bits, you'll get more subscriptions, you'll make more money. Mm-hmm. So it's like the social nature of Twitch, like it's a, like you could close off comments, yes. right? And you could like end chat, but then you will never grow. It's that true. Point, right? Yeah. There will there you limit your organic growth as mm-hmm. a result. And that's the other thing I really wanted to talk about was mm-hmm. just how devastating it is to see the streamer economy floundering essentially mm-hmm. the way that it is because if we look at the top 100 earners on Twitch, mm-hmm. they're mostly men. Mm-hmm. And we have, I think there's like three women in the top 100 earners and only one is a woman of color and that's Pokimane. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's it's devastating to even look at the top 10,000 streamers, which is the it's a tenth of a percent of Twitch. 
making any any kind of reasonable amount of money mm -hmm. on this platform because Twitch takes 50%, right? So any yeah. subscriptions that you get, any bits that you get, and bits are like current or platform currency, essentially, Twitch is going to take 50% of that. Hmm. Most people don't make more than like a hundred bucks every couple of months mm -hmm. if you're a small streamer. And if you're a larger streamer, you're making like 30,000, which is what? Like minimum wage? Yeah. yeah. It's wild. Barely. It's, it's barely, that, yeah. That's crazy. Like, especially, I, I, I think what tends to like draw headlines is like, look at how much this top Twitch, you know, person is making. You could right. do that right. too if you join our platform. Like it is a big like, it's calling card yeah it's aspirational it's like oh th this could be you if you want to play video games your entire life but so many people like f so many can barely like make a living on it um there's I nine million streamers, <laughs> right there's nine million twitch streamers alone mm -hmm. creating content on a regular basis and of those nine million twitch streamers if we look at the top ten they they're not they're barely making enough to survive on the mm -hmm. platform now they do have additional sponsorships and paid opportunities and they have merchandise and everything like that. So they are able to at least, I don't know, stay afloat through other means. Right, but this right. is the big issue with this, with the gig economy, the creator economy is we're all beholden to whatever platforms we end up on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a, that's a good point. Like I, I have seen a lot of streamers like with their own merchandise and stuff. And that is okay. And you, you're not... house and, yeah. you know, coffee. Yeah. So, so that's not going to be, so Twitch isn't going to take 50% from that, but then yeah. you're still giving up money to whatever other platforms you're on. Like you're dependent on those things. I am wondering too, like, are we just in a, does this show like the weakness of the streamer economy right now? Because Twitch is pretty much the place it is the place you stream because YouTube gaming exists, you know, Facebook gaming exists, but nobody, nobody really watches those things. Like they need to pay top people to go over. For Which is what they did for with Dr. Lupo and Tim the Tapman. Those yeah. are big, big, big Twitch streamers, or they were big Twitch streamers until YouTube Gaming said, hey, mm -hmm. we'll give you lots of money if you come hang out with us. And both of those streamers are like really, really nice humans, and I'm, I'm very glad for their successes, genuinely. But we saw that with Mixer as well. Mixer was mm -hmm. trying to take yeah. a slice of the market mm -hmm. share, and, you know, RIP Mixer. I will miss RIP Mixer. RIP like, Mixer. Pour one out for Mixer. They had some really cool tech. I do remember that they had like ultra low latency streaming. Oh before yeah, the everybody... light the light mm -hmm. speed streaming was revolutionary back when they mm -hmm. were Beam.io. I wrote, mm -hmm. a, I think I wrote a piece about that over on one of the one of the sites I freelanced with. But it's it's so important to have additional competition out there, mm -hmm. and there's no competition for Twitch. None. Mm -hmm. That is, they're the market leader, and that's where mm -hmm. everybody is. So yeah. This kind of and it, this kind of goes back to the Facebook problem too, just having like oh, one yes. dominant company in that space. Except like Facebook, for for all of its problems, it was like at least fairly competent in terms of like building a robust platform that could support all these people and everything. Um, Twitch just feels like this thing is like held together by duct tape, in a way, but it's managed to be very very popular. Um, it's a very it does, profitable piece of duct tape. Basically, yeah. Like rather than invest in engineering. The mixer thing is worth pointing out too, because that was Microsoft bought that. The yes. full the full power of Microsoft and you know the Xbox marketing machine. Like everybody and they was trying still to make couldn't Mixer make happen. It go. Mm -hmm. They still couldn't make it go because they were they were gaining ground marginally. Like if we look at some of the data that uh, I believe we've seen either from Streamlabs or Stream Elements, one of one of the one of the tool and service places, they tend to put out monthly Mm -hmm. um monthly reports about who's making moves in in streaming and they were gaining ground like mm -hmm. very small bit by bit but they were mm -hmm. moving but even then microsoft's like we cannot make this engine go we just can't mm -hmm. and we and mm -hmm. we tried and tried and tried and they poured so much money into it and so much money into streamer acquisition and eventually just ended up partnering with facebook gaming and they're like all right well you can take our take our Ugh. partners Ugh. you know and i really yeah. really yep, really yep, 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 dislike yep, yep. I really dislike that because I was on Mixer yeah. and I ended up having to go to Twitch because I'm like, I don't want to go to Facebook. <laughs> it was nice to have other you, it was nice to have other options. Go ahead, Trillin. Did you have was uh Mixer taking the same cut as Twitch? I don't know. I wasn't an affiliate on Mixer yet. Okay. I'd only just started streaming on there. I think that it was probably comparable. 
Mm -hmm. okay. but I don't think it was the same. I know that for Facebook gaming, I think that it's much more generous that streamers mm -hmm. get to keep, I think, 70% of their earnings, if not more, if you're a small streamer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, mm -hmm. that's what's interesting to me is that like 50% is a big cut. It's and huge. It's hate. Yeah. And then for the, all that money they're taking from people, they couldn't even protect the information. Well, they couldn't, you know, no, nope. they don't mm -hmm. protect the information. And quite frankly, they don't protect the streamers, which is, right. you know, brings us full circle back to the, back to the hate raids and what so many streamers of color and so many women or gender non-conforming streamers had to deal with. And mm -hmm. they just were not protected. Even on the front page of Twitch, they weren't protected mm -hmm. during, you know, mm -hmm. Black History Month or during Women's History Month or Pride Month. It doesn't matter. They just could not keep up with all of the hate on their platform. And those alarm bells had been sounded for years. And there are still people inside the company that are sounding those alarms. Mm -hmm. I, I do have a question. What did we learn, if anything, uh, in addition to what was leaked uh, from the from the hack? Like, is there any any insight into how Twitch is run that we didn't know before from from docs that might have been revealed? I don't think we have that information yet. Mm -hmm. From what I understand, it was a raw data dump, and it was part one. From what oh. I understand, it was part one of a of a data dump, and I don't I don't know how much more these hackers are going to end up releasing. Mm -hmm. But I would imagine we are going to see more documentation. One of the things that I found to be the most interesting mm -hmm. is that they were planning this steam, this like steam like yeah. service uh, over on Twitch, which was very interesting because yeah. if you'll recall, Discord was doing something similar for a mm -hmm. little while. And everybody's kind of like started to move in that direction. And then sure, they realized, right. oh, wait, the market leader. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, that's going to be hard to compete with. The code name was Vapor. Too, it was Vapor, which is yeah. just like, <laughs> could you get any doing. more obvious? <laughs> you see what you're doing. And all these companies, all they want to do is just copy from each other. But, you know. Sure. But if you yeah. can innovate on it, then great. That's, you know, that's mm -hmm. why that's why we have technology yeah mm -hmm. yeah competition yeah. is always good but mm -hmm. at the same time we haven't learned too too much about how twitch operates but we did mm -hmm. learn a lot about how the biggest content creators operate mm -hmm. and what they are taking home and what the rest of the the content creators on the platform in fact are not taking home all sure. I'm hearing is that I should not start my own Twitch streaming account. Maybe. I have a Twitch account, but I'm not gonna start streaming on there anytime Maybe soon. Maybe for fun. It's it's the yeah. thing too. Like I wanna I wanna be able to stream somewhere at like a, maybe some occasional role playing games or something and do it for fun sure. and not feel like I'm beholden to like a terrible platform too. And what are what are my options, right? YouTube right. gaming, Facebook gaming. I feel like YouTube gaming may be the most like neutral of all of them but it's still like so. beholden to yeah but it's still youtube at it's the end YouTube. of the day it's still and it still has a ton of it still has mm -hmm. a ton of issues as a result and mm -hmm. there have been plenty of plenty of problems with youtube as a platform mm -hmm. even if youtube gaming kind of sits <laughs> right next to it there are new streaming platforms that are coming out more and more often there's i believe there's one that's supposed to be coming out in november and I cannot for the life of me remember the name of it, but it's very <laughs> mental health focused and okay. very focused on safety and security. There's also, um, there's DLive, there's Caffeine. Yep, there caffeine. are, mm -hmm. yeah, there are some of these other platforms that, you know, they exist, but their, their install bases are so minuscule that mm -hmm. content creators are not necessarily going to be able to do what they need to do in order to make the money they need to survive. For sure, for I, sure, yeah. I'm sorry, Dev. I I just feel like we also might want to remember Twitch's owner is Amazon. Yes, and yes. Like, that is the problem. That's not yeah. great either. <laughs> like, come on. It's no, great. it's bad. Yeah. So it's very bad. Uh, and the Twitch thing just seems like we. I brought up the comparison to Facebook, but it is essentially that, right? It is a giant social platform that's prioritized yeah. growth over everything else in terms of in not keeping its people safe and not keeping like itself secure. Yeah. Um. But this seems like the logical conclusion of like an internet built on these services, right? These services that only prioritize growth. So it does make growth, me think back. Profit above people. People everything. don't mm -hmm. matter. Planet doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You know, just profit. Head just empty, profit. only profit. <laughs> oh boy. Yes. It does make me miss the days of like the internet, of the mid nineties, right? Where every, oh, it was just the wild west. I remember. It was a weird time. Oh. It was lovely. Oh. It was weird. Everything was kind of broken, but it was also like, there was a freedom to it all and like uh, coffee and, FTP. Oh, yeah, a neutrality to it right? all. I do I do feel like 
the story of like where streaming goes is also going to be the story of where social networking goes of like Agreed. these other services that can maybe be a little more decentralized and uh, not be beholden to these giant companies that don't want to actually take care of their users. So I the guess users are the product, right? It's, yeah. a, it's a free platform to join and all of these platforms are free platforms to join. So mm -hmm. You're the product. Your data is the product. That's what mm -hmm. they are selling. That's what they're making their money off of. It's because it's, you know, they're making mm -hmm. their money off of you, off of us yeah. as creators. Yeah. You're the product and you probably won't end up being a Twitch millionaire, but no. you will be like if you contribute, you will be contributing to the content Amazon needs. All right. They need content. They need people to keep producing stuff. Yep. Otherwise, Twitch doesn't exist as a service. So and it's you'll really... be a glorious hundred air. Yeah. You make glorious, if you'll that. make a hundred dollars, maybe. Every yeah, three months. I, I, I mean, look, I, I, I agree with a lot of what we're saying, right? Mm -hmm. The centralizing is, is not great. It's just, a, it's kind of a conundrum though, right? Like it you, is. You, 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 because you can't expect the audience to like, be alternating between three different video services all the time. Mm -hmm. Just be like, oh, we're going to watch YouTube today. We're going to watch Twitch another day. A lot of people are just going to pick their favorite service with their exactly. favorite content and just go watch it. So whatever. They're going to follow the their popular, favorite content creators. And like exactly. that's that's really what it comes down to is the audiences right. exist because the content creators have created the audience, essentially. Mm -hmm. they've, they've made yeah. that their community, their space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So a lot of folks will go follow their favorite streamers no matter where they go or their favorite sure. content creators no matter where they go. Mm -hmm. But being a content creator from like being a full time content creator and I am I am not a full time content creator by any stretch of the imagination, but I have tons of friends that are and it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard, yeah. you know, having to create content for like your fan house or your coffee and then yeah. going on TikTok and posting your live streams and then highlights and clips and it's just like it's exhausting i don't know how mm -hmm. a lot of them do it full time yeah. they're heroes yeah. it's uh it's rough. Heroes like, of the it, internet even just doing a couple of these live streams and doing podcasts and stuff like it, it kind of drains you uh you yeah. know one thing i want to mention is uh there was another hack on twitch there was uh on october yep. 8th there was the hack where uh, various pages were defaced and Jeff Jeff Bezos was the pog champ. Do we expect to see more hacks? Because, hey, the source code is out there now. So people who want to attack Twitch know exactly how to attack they Twitch. They know their vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it would not even remotely surprise me if we ended up seeing more hacks in the near future. Twitch has a lot of work to do because that is a if that is the current build and they don't have anything else, you know, sitting behind firewalls or anything like that, mm -hmm. they're they're screwed and we're going to see more stream keys needing to be reset, more passwords needing to be reset, more data that we're going to see dumped onto 4chan potentially. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, I, I, I look I, again, it's a very complicated issue. I will say uh, Julio, our, our video um, streaming technician slash king um <laughs> <laughs> points out that following content creators didn't work for ninja on mixer or shroud i was, I was um, gonna point that out yeah 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 right mm -hmm. so so there's part of it's this true. that also has to do mm -hmm. with like it's not just the content creators there's also it's, just going to be big mm -hmm. platforms with already built-in audiences that if mm -hmm. you're a new yes. small creator you're looking to tap into that that number of mm -hmm. of, yes. of audience uh, members you just have to start somewhere. You're going to pick the one that has the most. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You're going to pick the platform where you're going to see the biggest success yeah. for the lowest lift. Because when you're first right. starting out, you don't have the time or the money or the resources or, or whatever it is in mm -hmm. order to invest in smaller pro platforms. Yeah. You know, that's that's Which the deal it's here. Hard. Yeah. yeah. It's that's hard basic for the economics. smaller platforms. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. It's mm -hmm. just basic <laughs> economics. It's so tough too, because mm -hmm. as much as we want to say, like, oh, just leave Twitch, you know, go somewhere else, it's not, it's not reasonable or feasible mm -hmm. for exactly. so many content creators for so many reasons. And mm -hmm. one of the biggest reasons is audience. Yeah, mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I do we're gonna have to wrap this at some point, but I do I do think like the future of the internet can't be this. It can't be a single platform. Nope. kind of devouring everything and an entire market and controlling everything. Um, there are a lot of like academics and, you know, people who write about the, the ideas of media theory say like, we, we got to like decentralize the internet in a way. And I think that's kind of the thing, right? We can't just have everything behind Facebook or everything behind Twitch, but if we had a way to using some of the tech uh, we've, we've all used like, um, 
some peer to peer stuff or like the way BitTorrent can share a file across a mm. lot of people. Like I'm waiting for the day when like I could I could just do something like I could control kind of where things go, uh, yeah. launch my own stream that's like propagated throughout the Internet and shared peer to peer with everybody and not rely on like, yeah, Amazon's own dream. platform and their services and yep. everything. So I hope we get there. Guys, like I miss the old internet and I'd love to get us back. I here. also miss the old internet. As yeah. as old as that makes all of us sound. Yes. Yeah, I know. Yes. I miss yes, the old bloomers. internet. Sure. Whatever. <laughs> Absolutely. It's fine. We're just we're just hyper online forever. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I mean, there's another name. Uh, no, this is more like millennial alert. I don't know, like because oh, yeah. the boomers were before but, us, right? So let's yes. be let's be. No, accurate. they're just trying to say we're old. We're just trying we're to say we're old. We're old. We're just old because millennials we're aren't old. actually old. On the so. on the internet, we're about a million. Yeah, it's true. Everything is in annoying. internet years, we're years. about a million yep. years old. We can't refer I've been to anything on the internet that since like 1993. Same. So. Yeah. Oh my god, Microsoft oh, Comic no. Chat. Everything. Oh, that was my favorite. Hey, well, Reminisce. chat rooms, everything, oh, everything. No. All right. Thank you so much, Manda, for joining us. Where can thank people find me. your work and where can they find you on the internet? So you can find me on Twitter. I am at Amanda Farrow. Mm -hmm. And you can also listen to my podcast that I run with my partner, Mike Footer, who has also been on this show. Love Mike. And yes. yeah, he's. I think he's we saw wonderful. him running around the background, right? He or was. Were, were <laughs> he's, sitting, he's sitting next to me. That was my eldest uh -huh. coming in after high school. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, oh, she's adorable. We love her. Mm -hmm. So you can follow our, our exploits with the virtual economy podcast, which is about the business of games for the rest of us. You don't have to have an MBA in order to listen to it because Yay. we make it fun. We make it silly. Yay. We make it accessible. So if you're curious about what goes into the financial, legal, and otherwise underpinnings, um, you can follow us on Twitter at, at virtual econcast and virtualeconcast.com. Yay. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Make sure to save your audio and uh, just shoot that over to Ben, however however you see fit, okay? Yeah, I'm copied on the email yeah. that we on used it. to coordinate and everything. So uh, we've j got just a couple of minutes. We can do a couple of minutes of Q&A. So chat, if you want to know anything about the Twitch hack, if you want to talk about points of the Twitch hack that we didn't get to, uh, we can talk about that now. Um, I looked up uh, just the intake of some of my favorite streamers, and it, it's impressive. Um, you know, there are some people who are streaming full, like, multi-camera yep. shows yep. onto yeah. Twitch. And so we need to make a distinction that those people are not nearly the same as someone who just got a PC that could handle uh, a streaming rig. Right. Like the the uh, channel Critical Role. Uh, oh, Critical people, Role. Good for them, too. Yeah, they, they took Love in, that. I think, 9.6 million in two years. Mm -hmm. Which it's a huge is production. incredible. Yeah. But it's a huge production. It is. Yeah. They are basically doing TV. They are doing mm -hmm. multi-camera. Yep. They are doing highly produced um, playthroughs of tabletop RPGs. So that money is, you know, not just going into, what is his name? Brendan Lee Mulligan, I think. <laughs> No, no, not um, it, it's a some dude with three three names. Um, mm -hmm. uh, apologies if I got that wrong, but it is not <laughs> going into the directly into the DM's pocket. Mm -hmm. They have a, a whole lot going on uh, that they need to pay for. Um, but yeah, exactly. It goes. That's a lot most... of talent too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, it, they're, and, that they're paying for, and, and goes... a lot of them are. You know, it's not just a. It's not just all white guys. Like there are oh, some yeah, incredible. Absolutely women of color, people of color, queer folks. Like it's it's a very inclusive stream, a very yeah, inclusive live yeah. play. Yeah, like Critical Role has done a really great job at that. And then in general, I think the money ends up going to people who do a really good job of creating community. Mm -hmm. Of course, you have to have a community. You have to have followers before you maybe deepen that community interaction with Twitch. Mm -hmm. So like I've been really into the Kenny Beats live streams over mm -hmm. um, 2020. Kenny Beats is a <laughs> uh, well-known rap producer. And so yeah. he would have like beat battles, you know, people who are into him, who also, you know, make uh, rap beats, do um, electronic music production and that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he'd do weekly or monthly things. He'd have prizes for That's cool. um, his, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the winners of the beat battles. 
I, I think this uh, is why I like podcasts, by the way, like as a platform, because it is so like, hey, nobody owns like the, the entire thing, despite it being dominated exactly. by iTunes. Yeah. Like yeah. we're we can do whatever we want. It's still the Wild West, but hey, also platforms like I look at what TikTok does and TikTok's um was it the remixing feature, I think is one of the coolest things oh, to come. Yeah, I think it's called remix, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is uh it is incredible. It is incredible. Like people can go down layers and layers of video and music and add their own stuff. Oh so. yeah, you what? mean yeah. Uh, like duets? Duets. The duets. Oh, duets. Yeah. yeah. Duets. And also remix, but oh, remix is Instagram reels. That's Instagram. That's, that's Instagram. Instagram yeah. reels. <laughs> I keep seeing the word remix. Anyway. Wow. Remix um, is something else. There's everything I... everywhere at all times. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Be on every platform, to... everybody. But go ahead, Jerlyn. Yeah, I would love to. Just... Not not on Twitch, maybe maybe one day somewhere else. But uh, I will stream for y'all. Me playing Crossy Road. Oh my god, <laughs> that sounds great! It will be sick. It'll be it'll be. You dope. know, you That's probably could get a few you people right watching now. you play the horrible capitalist probably. cat game. I really would. No, the cat game's mm-hmm. a little too boring to watch. The Crossy uh, Road. You know, just how, there like, are some people who runs. watch slow TV, like yeah. that that Nordic slow TV thing, where it's just like let's watch a, a train go on like a mountain route for four hours. So Something why nice not? About that. Yeah. Okay. That Sorry, video game equivalent. and not to not to interrupt this Twitch related <laughs> talk right now, but it is 11:50 a.m. and quick shout: if you go to Engadget.com, you'll see our our article about the HTC Vive Flow. It's actually this is that weird bug eye VR. Headset That's still the PR audio. image. Still the PR image. And those are yeah. still the PR images. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> we don't use the ice dog photos one in our article, thankfully. I think um, so. So check it out for the actual details the official details about the htc by flow $500 i'm looking forward to playing with that thing it's very it's very cool all right any other questions or shall we let amanda let amanda go free i think we are all figured out great so thank you so much for joining us amanda yes of thank course. you for, thank you for us, having me yeah and Thanks, this amanda. Stream... it was good talking to you it was lovely this... talking to you too this Go thing comes to you via our video team. Wait, 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 Ben. What? No, oh, we're we, letting We have to do our full credits. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Could, we do have to do go, the full credits. Wow. Yes, that's right. That's right. You can okay. go, Amanda. It's go just all right. Thanks, bye, y'all. And so I'm Thanks, getting bye. too ready. Okay. It's you guys okay. do the credits. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Really quick, by the way, uh, Julio, our video technician, streaming king, has been mm-hmm. asking if we want to stream live to Twitch and TikTok at the same time for this broadcast. Anyway, he's... He's maybe TikTok. Right. TikTok would be One, fun, but yeah. then people are gonna do what uh, our our dumb thing. Yeah, so that's, that's gonna not be gonna be. Yeah. Not... <laughs> All right, we ready for the credits? Mm-hmm. Yep, go for it. Well, that's it for the episode this week, everyone. Thank you as always for listening. Our theme music is by game composer Dale North. Our outro music is by our very own Terrence O'Brien. The podcast is produced by Ben Elman. You can find Devendra online at. At Devendra on Twitter, and I do the Filmcast podcast at thefilmcast.com. Check out our review of Dune coming soon. Also, Squid Games. We did the whole thing. Yeah. If you want to send me all of your kitty cat tycoon furniture pictures, you can throw them on to Twitter. I'm at Sherlyn Lowe. Email us your thoughts at podcast at engadget.com. Leave us a review on iTunes, please. And subscribe on anything that gets podcasts, including Spotify. Okay, I do have to issue a bit of a correction. If mm-hmm. we were to live stream to TikTok, they wouldn't be able to duet us because oh, right. live those don't get are... saved, right? Yeah, but, and oh. I'm pretty sure it's just because they don't have the data architecture for that. It's just big. But yeah. Eventually, yeah. eventually they could. Eventually, yeah. you we put might clips. be able to save. Yeah, mm-hmm. if you posted clips to TikTok, then you yeah. then people could duet it, but uh, <laughs> you can't just duet a live stream. I, I would just love to see, like, what is the video ninjutsu you would do, Julio, to... Uh... <laughs> To get us fitting into a TikTok format at the same time. I think that would actually be be Genjutsu by mm. uh, Naruto standards because that's mm. uh, more magical. <laughs> I can I will make it. I will make it fit. It'd be kind of small if you do vertical, but yeah, you can do like sixteen by nine, and mm. Zoomies will have to flip their phone, which is something they Zoomies never fit their flip their phones. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. That. Okay. All right. Uh, so we've got you could, one you could do, relevant yeah. question. One quick mm-hmm. relevant question. You could do the video Costco. credits, by the way. After yes. you're been. <laughs> yeah, we have one quick question from Gonzalo Costa, which yeah. is whether or not uh, 
they can expect any other hardware announcements at the Pixel 6 event. Well, I am not expecting any other hardware announcements, so they better not be any other. The buds? They never announced the buds they were supposed to, right? The buds A? No, we got them. We got them. The buds A were for this year, and then uh, the (laughs) Nest stuff is already like the cameras. We might. I don't know. We might get a surprise Nest audio thing, but I would be I would be surprised. That would be weird. So. Maybe over over the ear headphones because everybody has to do oh, everybody God. has to have their own. No, pair. that's not yeah. Google's thing. Google's thing is to do things a bit more affordable, and that's about Google's it. Google's so, thing is to do um, everything badly, apparently. But yeah, yeah. Hey, wow, <laughs> so mean. Uh, <laughs> but maybe I don't that's know. So true. Um, thanks to Gonzalo <laughs> for the question. I'm gonna before Ben does his thing, do a quick roll call shout out: Jonathan Anderson, Rob Langley, Sianda Makanti, uh, Makatini. Will so Joshua Pack, uh, Hash Browns, Louis GV, Hash and Browns. more. Hash Browns, I love that. I'm hungry. Yeah, I know. Marco Munoz, uh, Chris Reardon, I know you were here earlier today. Buddy305, Love Taps, Glenn Farelli, Omar Carranza, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you all for joining us. We are always appreciative. We miss Mark Dell, who wasn't here today. Uh, I think D Man was here. Um, <laughs> yes. Jimmy Chung was, was here. here. Usually. Yes. So thank you all for joining as always. We love our usuals and you you could become a usual usual. also. And be shouted out on the show. Yeah. 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 Just like show up for multiple episodes. We remember everyone's names. (laughs) And have quirky names. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Hash Browns, please come back. But anyway, this stream comes to you via our video team, which is led by Kyle Mock with Julio Barrientos and Luke Brooks. But it's powered by everyone in the chat. You guys are what makes it fun. Uh, We really enjoy interacting with you. And uh, give us a rating on iTunes. We live in a world of algorithms, and you know this helps. If you're that into tech podcasts, you know how important algorithms are. We'll see you next week. Thanks for joining. Bye. Later.